Well, I'm sure it's going to be less than three hours. <laughs> to be fair, everyone has been less than three hours so far, but we've been very, very close to breaking that magic number. Special <laughs> episode. Today could be the day, man. <laughs> All right. Let's get started. So welcome back to another episode of Spec Chat. We're into episode five now, March 2024. Um, five episodes deep. It's been a learning process so far. We've been listening to the feedback, I think, for future episodes. Getting much more hone in on... Hone in? Hone in? Can I, I can never tell what's the actual word there. Focus on more of a discussion-based kind of podcast, which I think the listeners enjoy more, and I think which we enjoy more. That Head and Cup one last time was... Ooh. I think we could all tell we were dragging our feet a little bit at the moment. So... Moving forward, a bit more discussion-based thing. That's what we enjoy, what everyone else does. Um, if you do like the competitive scene of Vision Mars 2, you're in the right place. Spec Chat is going to be all about going on a deep dive. And our podcasts are usually about two and a half hours. So feel free to split the episode up into multiple lessons. Go for a dog walk. A long drive if you're traveling somewhere. Airport. Or just sitting in the house doing some work or doing some revision. Please share with some like-minded individuals if you do enjoy it. Read it. Discords, send it to your friends who also play Age. That is very much appreciated, and of course, continue to give us some feedback when you can. Uh, our agenda today is relatively big. We're going to do tournament discussions. We're going to break it into three different bits. We'll discuss the DLC. We'll have a little return of the quiz for Tarsus and Panda as well, and yes, yeah, some other kind of major news in Age of Empires world. Of course, we'll come back. Panda, all the way from South Africa, a couple hours in the future. Panda, hello. Hello. <laughs> yes, it's already dark here, unlike in other places of the world. I was I was just saying to Tarzan, like when before you got here, it was it's actually really nice to be doing the podcast because I have I have my full setup right at the window, so I always look outside the window and it's light this time. For the first time ever. Yeah, it's been dark like an hour and a half at least now. Such. <laughs> Tarzis, welcome back, our resident Frenchman. Hello. Sounding crisp and very nice. <clears throat> How have you been doing? Tarzis, you're leaving me on the red receipt. Sorry. I believe it. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing good. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway. Uh, Fantastic. Our first topic of today, we're going to be talking about T90's Hidden Cup discussion. If you're not aware, he put a big long video on his T90's Extras channel, so there's actually a good chance that people did miss it, because that's only got 30k subs in comparison to... What's his main channel got? 250 or something? Something like that. Or three, going into 300k. Yeah, so basically his Extras channels gets the stuff... Actually like... no, it's 360 Jesus, thousand, but yeah. Jesus Christ. Okay, so 360k on his main channel. So his extra channel is essentially stuff he doesn't want to put on the main channel, but he wants to put out for people to consume as content works. Anyway, very informative video. I'm going to hand it over to you, Panda, and you can kind of break down what T90 kind of uh, went through in this hour and 10 minute uh, dissection of the event. That was, uh, it was long. It's almost as long as this podcast. Yeah, but we've got three um, people, and that was just that was just one guy talking to a camera. He's he's done well. There. Yeah, it does. But yeah, so to those who don't know, it's on T Ninety's Extras channel. It was it was a very informative listen. He talked about a wide variety of stuff, like the you know the viewer numbers that he got it was pretty good. If you and like the overall scene of it. Like he talked about production, or the a lot of the behind the scenes stuff, the small slips and that. But he was very, very open about, like open, candid, you know, like giving his opinions about it, which he usually is, Mister T ninety. Um, if he like, he'll say he'll say like what he is thinking, which is, I think that's always good, you know, um, mm -hmm. having that, yeah, um, being open and that. He was talking about Red Bull sponsoring him, and like he just messaged them asking, like, "Yo, you guys can help me." And I like, "Yes, he has a fridge and a Red Bull," and they're like, 
that's that was like the requirements and then there was a bit um of a I'm not gonna I don't know maybe like with Surfshock they were a bit disappointed with the with their return on the investment, which kind of a weird um, one I thought he talked to be about. I kind of agreed with his points about it, like um, what he was saying. With like the NEC um, thing, it seemed very, very yeah. odd to be like, for the ex it's, you're essentially hitting the exact same audience you would be hitting for NEC before. So I don't know well, what were they, what were they really expecting? I have no idea. Maybe they're maybe thinking he has the, a bigger uh, yeah, the amount of clicks and everything. Uh, maybe people were clicking the ads more on. Uh, during an AC5? Like, yeah. Like, uh, let's say, like, something like that. If you get the VPN during an AC5, you don't need it anymore during because you have the VPN now. Yes, so maybe yes. people who were looking for a VPN opportunity or something like that got it during an AC5, and since Hidden Cup was so soon after, maybe there was less of a market to tap into. I'm not sure. It's also, like, you get six months for free, which is, like, I don't need to, I don't need to go now, right? Again. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, T9 did say, like, it was some point halfway through. Then he, he kind of went, like, guys, click that link. It helps me a lot. Like, mm -hmm. it helps a lot. And it actually did make a big difference. Like, more people clicked after that. So maybe it could have been a bit more, you know, like, Guys, click the link, click this link. Um, because even just the link click is enough, is good for, it's a metric that sponsors look at uh -huh. and those type of things. Um, I've known from like watching other games and that sometimes there's no promo code, but just like even people clicking the link, even if they're not buying the product, then they know, I think they use it as a metric to see how many people might be interested in, mm -hmm. in a product um, like that. Um, I think from Surfshark, they thought he could be a bit more like, you know, more like how Nelly did it in AC. I think it was in person. Yeah, but I mean, but... it was it was also just a completely like the actual ad was a completely different approach as well, though. Like the one at I Nelly's know. was a lot more, um, say, serious. It was it, it felt like an ad, whereas T90's one felt. He kind of touches on this in his discussion video as well. It kind of felt. More of part of the stream, part of like the general content, the show. Yeah, yeah. And maybe could have spent like a couple minutes after each of those videos to like, guys, remember to do this. Um, right, and but yeah, like I, th I just think timing wise, it's that's that had the biggest impact. Most of the people who are gonna want you know a vpn at least in the aoe scene probably already got it at nac to support that and you're not you're not gonna buy a product twice right yeah not, or, not or people like just or people just already have them as well because like aoe yeah. players are generally you know they're not teenagers they're older people so if they needed the vpn they probably already have one or some have some sort of service yeah Indeed. I don't. Uh, yeah, I I don't feel like it, VPNs are all that. I don't think they're a great product to sell. You know what I mean? Like, if they're for, if they're gonna throw money at sponsorships, I think it's great. But I don't like. I think a lot of people struggle to see the value for money in a VPN, even with six months free or whatever. It's it's also super saturated. Like oh, the market is crazy. YouTube, yeah. If you if you're like a regular YouTube watcher, chances are you get like one or two VPN ads per week, because Surfshark, NordVPN, and maybe some other competitors often are sponsoring content creators uh, on YouTube and other platforms. So yeah, like there's so many opportunities to to get. Uh, those deals from other places that it's hard to uh, to really make a difference. But then again, I, I I imagine that the sponsor is should be aware of that, should be aware that they are sponsoring so many people, and so it's unlikely that they will really make a lot of sales. So I'm guessing, like Panda said, it's like the, maybe the clicking rate was like lower than they were expecting. Uh -huh. 
in which case, yeah, like it's always this like tricky question when you're presenting an ad. You don't want to be too obnoxious as it detracts people from from the other content that you're doing, but you still want people to be to be clicking. And I think I think there have been studies that says like yeah, like if you do tell people to subscribe at the end of a video, then they are more likely to subscribe than not, or yeah, this kind of thing. So maybe like Tinani said, he could have been more assertive and say like hey, guys, this really helps. Please click the link even if you're not buying the thing. Or well. Don't say that last part, but uh, something like that. I don't know. It's it's tricky. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've never had a sponsorship, so like, I don't know how it works, right? Do you know what? Do you know what the wild thing for me is? We have Surfshark. We are very much checking the metrics, doing whatever. Like you have to have very proper ad segments and whatever. Then you have Red Bull. Says we're going to give you the money. All you got to do is put a Red Bull fridge and put it just behind you. <laughs> Like how, it, I, like how crazy is the difference for that? Like, what an absolute! I, to me, that just blows my mind. And now T ninety still got <laughs> he still got the fridge and stuff in his background as well because it's obviously a good, it's it's a nice way to like keep them in mind and show some appreciation their way and kind of keep Red Bull sweet. And just that whole that whole thing is just mind blowing to me how different that is. Yeah. As a, while watching this video, I was actually thinking of this and something I discussed with someone a long time ago is why don't they have in tournaments like sponsorships like buying buildings? Like, um, it, it sounds stupid, but like you, like you have the, like, let's say the town center, right? And then on the, at the top, like that top tower of the town center on each side of it, with the Surfshark logo, like mm -hmm. you get some odd people working in there, and then every time, like it, it has unfortunately has to go, you know, part of the requirements. But like the Surfshark T, look at uh, like the Surfshark TC. Um, so you Temple did talk that about there, didn't like I'm I'm sure Temple. I don't think no, they didn't. I don't think they did it. I think he just like he just had um pe like people in his community who you think made so? it. Oh, huh. I didn't. Like, yeah, yeah, I remember I was, back then I was still like actively reading his Discord and was people are like, you know, like for example, the doubt stuff, right? Um, the doubt castle more, the doubt monastery, the doubt faith, yeah, like those things. They all they all came from the community who made it and then showed it to streamers. And I think the same one was with Tempo. Um, yeah, and it, I thought I thought that was it, like it, part of his agreement. Same. Maybe it was. Uh, I th at least my. Under, at least how I understood it, it was like it came from someone in the community, like yo, here, watch this, and yeah, yeah. But yeah, well, I think that is something that could be so that uh, could be interesting. And I was sort of like, um, you have a hello fresh sponsorship. You put it on the fall works, and you can make these like um, Tarsus will remember them back in the early escape tourneys. They would have these super cringy. Um, ads um fast fast the fastest ish of like like something like that and then you have like you want food fast like a full work get hello fresh and then it's just like <laughs> like like and then you just have, in the video it's just like um a full work and then quickly bills building it and then the food count ticking up massively like you can you know you mod the stuff and you can you can have fun with it like it was, yeah at least i think that's that's such a great opportunity you can use but i mean that's um, definitely did viper or hera have hello fresh sponsor sponsorships they had them recently I think ogn yeah. had a few yeah like hera did, i think it's generally something that nearly every kind of streamer will get offered for stream elements yeah um the depending on the size of the stream they might just be they might get a certain amount for like streaming x amount of hours but i think most of it's like based on like signups I think the first time I ever got it, it was like uh, the first the first ever offer I got from Hell Fresh, and I'm, keep in mind my stream wasn't even big. It was a hundred dollars they were offering per sign up, which is cr Ooh, that's yeah. crazy. And I actually did think about it. I was like, maybe I'll just like if people do it, I'll I'll put all of it towards like tourney funds. I was trying to like theorize yeah. how I could like <laughs> I could get people interested in actually doing it. Um, I never did it in the end because it's a pain in the bum, like having to do like certain things, and they were asking to do like unboxing and 
other random shit that I had no interest in doing on stream, you know. So I was like, can't really we be bothered doing that. We don't have Aloe Fresh in South Africa. Oh, really? It's something I would I would like to try at once. We'll see what the because I always see it in the ads, but like, yeah. But you say a hundred dollars per sign up, right? For me, a thousand dollars. You times that by like nineteen twenty, depending on the exchange rate. That's like. A month's salary for me, <laughs> like, yeah, like that's so long. And ten, like ten, is not a lot of signups to get if you're a small streamer, right? Um, uh, if you're a small streamer, I would still say ten's a lot, depending on how much it is. Maybe if you're like Viper size, it should be no problem. Yeah, yeah, Viper would be yeah easy, and he probably gets even a bigger rate given his size potentially. He should do. Yeah, I think mm. the ads is an interesting thing because I still. I don't think they're maybe integrating them in the game would be a step too far for a lot of people when we could just have like some sort of like you know like on um, a television broadcast or sports broadcast there's generally going to be some sort of like thing that will rotate with a logo or something like else and then the ads will come up through that way obviously extra nice. production we don't really have like a lot of that and we don't really have like tournaments that are like they've just been sponsored for like naming rights as well there's been a couple like the history, what was it? History hit open we had. Yeah, that was only one yeah. tournament, and then we had Holy Cup, um, which was sponsored by Holy Energy. Um, but there's not been a lot. I think, yeah, and Red Bull, of course. Right is also, but, yeah, but that's their own tournament. Yeah. But like, that's also something like uh, we're completely derailing from the original discussion. But like, value tournament. Like, um, like the naming right of it, uh, so to say, and like, if you can get an extra ten k, right? Imagine, like, but I'm trying to think of a a product name. I just go with the what you UK guys always talk about, Greg's like Greg's King of the Desert, and then it adds extra ten k to the prize pool. Like, yeah, I do that. Or if it doesn't um, go with the theme of the tournament, it's just like powered by Greg's or something else, you know? Or like, and yeah, there's loads of different ways you can like frame it. It doesn't have to be like the actual name of the yeah. tourney. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, like no. a, a lot of like what T90 and his and what he was talking about the sponsorship aspect. It's a big one, but there's definitely some things that've been missed. And he was kind of talking about sustainability pandas. I don't know if you want to yes, expand on that. that. Is, uh... Well, it's uh, also uh, well, actually he, he talked about, about it, like sustainability for him as well because he has to invest quite a lot of money in this, mm -hmm. even if he gets some of it covered for from whatever like costs, like point of view. Like, it's still I think the, it's still a chunk coming out of him, and that's also why he did like the fifty fifty split with the donations. Mm -hmm. um, in the past, he used to do uh, $1 for every subscription, but we have regional pricing for those anymore. So understandable, like it, you can't do it uh, anymore because there are people like he can't, he can't make up the money um, from a, for every sub if somebody's like, say if I dropped a hundred, if 100. I dropped a hundred, right? How much is a sub um, in South Africa in dollars terms? Like three. Okay, so, that's not bad. But still, it's Twitch takes it cut from him. I don't know what his deal is, but let's just go with the boring 50 50, right? And he's probably getting more, but like, let's say my three dollars, I, I drop a hundred subs. That's what just three hundred dollars. Twitch takes 150, and now yeah. he says he adds a dollar for everyone, and he only has fifty dollars left. And that's uh, that's an issue, like, that's with regional right. pricing. That's <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's bad for T90. So, um and I th I do agree. Like there needs to be more sustainability in the tournaments, actually in a broader sense as well, because the scene is a bit. It it sometimes it feels a bit too all in on the the big grand events instead of building a ecosystem that and the prize uh, you know putting like everything to the yeah. prize. We kind of have like every time we have a mem tournament these days, it feels like. I want to say he's having to beg for donations, but he's having to put out like videos and 
he's pretty much saying like we're not really there in cost yet <laughs> and I, I need like extra money to make make sure at least cover cost which is not it's not healthy like you said it's not sustainable can't be yeah it's um take some money from the price not... pool please yeah, yeah. and, and uh, another sustainability thing is the price pool spread which t90 did really well for hidden cup mm -hmm. it's not sustainable a lot of tournaments right we have fifty thousand dollar prize pool and then heroines it which he's been doing a lot recently and then he gets twenty thousand dollars for winning it although i think 20 is a bit too high from but like it's in that a lot of terms like 30 to 35 range which is a it, lot when we don't have that much yeah 20 is not is not it's not crazy it's pretty much a split that was uh i think the grand melee where it was 40 percent for the winner out of uh 100k which was that, that forty thousand dollars. Forty thousand. Forty thousand dollars. Forty thousand yeah. dollars for a tournament was announced a few weeks before. Crazy. Yeah. But yeah, like at least in my from my point of view, I think there needs more sustainability. Like we need to sustain not only the streamers doing this, right? Like somehow, even if if they take some cut of what my, like Microsoft gives them to help with production and admin costs. And that, and then as well, sustaining the the pro scene, or at, because if more like if you can earn more money from playing the game, it means you can put more effort into competing for the higher. Stuff. Gives because you a reason we, to do we, that. We, yeah, yeah. We went a period at one stage. There was one here, like so much of the money went into the top eight, and. I was also, I think, around in a time where the top eight always, always got invited, and like, how are you gonna be motivated to compete if somebody's already like, he wins one game, or oh, one set, he gets invited next time, guaranteed, like those type of, mm -hmm. like that kind of ecosystem wasn't. We're like, we're slowly moving away from it, but um... playing Arabia game one every tournament. <laughs> that is I think well. we should have a return to that. I'm kidding. Tars is shut, shut up. <laughs> Naughty step for you. You're you're gonna get banned. Oi, oi, oi. Right. But I I think we're moving away from the invite model and that is that is really good. I think probably so like Hidden Cup five did have eight invites, which I think T ninety touched on uh saying it was lucky that the guys did as well as they did, especially like Jordan who uh uh was apparently not playing a lot. Uh, probably helped a little bit by the. I think Yo was the only one who did a big hit to round two, and he had to face another invited player uh, in Viper in the first round. Uh, but yeah, like every invited player did pretty well out of the, the every seven of them. But he also I think probably it's gonna. Yeah, I think it was it was a time constraint. Uh, but I think he's gonna move away from that from that model, and I think that's that's really good for the scene to uh, not have as many invites, or or if you have invites, at least they are made on uh, criteria that that make sense, like participation into previous tournaments and results, so like ATP. Uh, if you're, I think. If you're top four, it's fair to get invites. Uh, like if you're Hera. It, it's unlikely you're not going to qualify. Uh, after... I think anything beyond four yeah. is just silly. Like, anything beyond four, I don't know if it's silly, but it starts getting more debatable. Way more questionable. The whereas... of the field, yeah, is like a lot bigger. We saw Tato win 4-3 in a grueling set against Barrels to qualify for NEC5. And then Barrels ended up not making it. So it's like... I know. And Tato was like a top three favorite for NEC5, and then, yeah, almost lost. And then Barls, who had pushed him to the, the, very last, the very last game, didn't make it. So it, it shows that from like, yeah, like maybe like five, or even like, yeah, Tato considered like top three in the world to uh, Barls, who, and then others, like maybe freaking Andy, top 15. It's very, very, like a very deep field. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, I think like, you can make an argument if we're only inviting like two for some of them, but I feel like any more than four is just too much. Like, it's, like there's, there's, there's like a good reason why, but like, like that Tato series is like a great example. 
Unless the main event is like 120 players somehow. Yeah, exactly. We're yeah, we like a long maybe... way from going. Oh god, like, can you imagine? 25 25% invites should be the limit. So if you have 16 players, it should be four. If you have 32, up to eight is okay. But yeah, it, 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 that's definitely something that to consider. Yeah. I think even if it's 32, I'd still... Still maybe camp it. I don't know. I guess, I guess it would it probably would be fine because it's going to be a much bigger field. Yeah, imagine part, who, yeah. like, imagine if you have like qualification for like a, a thirty-two player event. Technically, by seeding, you'll have the fifth one like, against seeds thirty-three uh, mm -hmm. in qualifications. I don't. Well, no, no, no. Against uh, more like sixty, sixty-five or something like that. Because the thirty-two. Ah, yes, true, true, true. Yeah, yeah. So that well, maybe that's Tato against Thurs and. Uh, and we so that was a pretty that was a close cool set, man. As well, that yeah, was, it was close. Set. That was a close. <laughs> that was a close set. We're not. We're actually not helping ourselves here. It's because of Manaspa, man. It's because of Manaspa. Yeah. I mean, that was also the most. Uh, you can't even blame Manaspa. That was the only um, game Tato dropped in yep, the yep. qualifiers. Yep. The damn terrors. <laughs> uh, that game, <laughs> everyone's like, "Oh, Manaspa broke." It's like, yeah, Tez was fighting uphill under a castle, <laughs> <laughs> like with. While being our number two to one, oh, like, no, Tato is uh, Tato. Tat, well, there's too many T's here. Um, Tato was fighting uphill with twenty pikemen against thirty Manaspa. If he had thirty knights, uh, if Tez had thirty knights, the result would have been the same. But I get, I get back then. Manaspa being broken was the hype thing. Not saying they aren't still broken. They might be. Uh, uh, I played a team game last night where an opponent had hundred and four Manaspas on the map. It was rough. <laughs> Uh, we we only won because one of their players desynced, I think. <laughs> so I don't think desync yeah, counts but... towards your points, though, right? No, it does because they kept on playing. I got the foot. Oh, what? We had a desync last week, and the game just like stopped oh. working for us. Oh, weird. Maybe they cheated. Yeah, uh, or maybe the guy is internet <laughs> drop. Oh, that might. Yes, that was that happened. He had a, that disconnect. Not the. Um, but whatever, getting off topic again. Um, a bit, <laughs> but, but, but yeah, so there needs, bring it back, it needs sustainability through the whole scene from casters for them to continue. And as well as for players in a sense so that they can compete more. Then um, something of the, that T90 talk or oh, was like, he was very critical um, of like, he has very high standards, right? Um, he was not happy with production a couple in the early days. There were lots of, well, maybe not happy was probably not the right word, but it was not not happy ish because there were some tech issues, especially in the first couple of days. He said he felt uh, Mapu was a bit below the standard that he was comparing used him, to from him. Comparing him to vodka as well, I think it was, was his like comparison thing. He was kind of like yeah. to try and like illustrate like the difference. And, was, uh... Yeah. And then there was also the the Balls Hera thing, which we didn't talk about last time because it wasn't announced back then yet. Um uh, where there was a, a, a hidden recorded game. I think we didn't talk about it. No, I think it, we we had whispers of it, and then we're like, yeah, we decided not to talk about it because it wasn't like fully yeah. confirmed yet. But Robo eventually made a post on AVs, uh yeah. and kind of explaining what what happened. What basically happened is Balls. Uh, that's what, according to what T90 said. At least Balls sent two wrecks labeled as Game Five, and uh, the way the like when they made the rec pack, they made it up. Then game five, then game five was actually game six, and they re they're like, oh, we have another recorded game here. Um, oh, and he already said, GG, good luck next. Yeah, um, yeah. which is a bit like, I, it, I mean, it happens. It, it is it was, like it was obviously bad that the game didn't get casted, but it didn't have any. Effect on the series. Imagine if it did, and you had to like roll it back. It could have been a lot worse. The thing was, yeah. so, the thing that was so surprising for me in this video is like how much you actually see the like. It wasn't like it wasn't like the fun. 
it wasn't like the super fun T90 you'd be used to if you go and like watch him cast a community game or something like it was like it was actually him very much of like his business head and like quite intense in the video. Like I think the way yeah. I think the way he described this moment was it was a monumental fuck up, which I actually I think I was <laughs> I was listening to this in the airport. And it really took me by surprise. Like <laughs> have you said this? <laughs> and I was just like, man, I've yeah. like not actually seen like this side of them like public facing. But you can like see how serious he, he takes like yeah. his business essentially Easy. and his brand, you know? But not yeah. not only that, I think I think it shows how much he cares for competitive integrity and like you know like deeply cares about the players and mm -hmm. you know like this like this is being like Barls took Hera to six games he's one of only two players to do that in the tournament uh, with the CCM so yeah that, mm -hmm. that like not seeing this this game that Barls won is is is, uh, is pretty big uh and yeah like that's I think maybe could be like a little bit harsh on himself and I think the the team like handled that well and, and he did say both players were actually really okay with it balls actually apologized for uh, miss for, for, for naming the, the regs or something like that but yeah like I guess it shows that how much he cares about having his, like about the, the competitive the integrity of his events and, and having the best events possible to showcase the, the players and everything which I think he maybe had that kind of reaction because of the lead into the event, maybe having that question a little bit. Maybe he had like yeah. such an emotional like it was like I, I could I could feel like the passion in it, like and what he was talking about though, and maybe that was because of what happened in the lead in with the uh, the think, sets and things being questioned. Maybe this plays a part. Like I think T ninety has always had a very uh has always had a very strong integrity uh well again and always had the competitiveness of his events as like his top priority and so having Hera question that like probably like uh like it was it was really painful for him and so yeah like, he's uh showing it again that yeah this is what counts for him uh before views before whatever you know mm. Yeah, should we, should we wrap up the uh, the T ninety video, Panda? Anything else you want to add? It's just uh, all I want to add to that is I think I agree with him. Not like not addressing it on stream. It it creates a how to put it like a modding shit show, um, and then <laughs> you have and it's already so many people in chat, right? I uh, um you have to um bat, like you have to go. Like it can end up being in an extremely bad where you have to go subscribe only mode or emote only mode, right? Those aren't those aren't situations you want in the chat. And if one person starts constantly talking about something, then it just it spirals out wildfire man. very fast. Yeah. So like, don't address it during the stream. I'm I'm glad they didn't. And even like we weren't told. All we know is was the same. Like. But T90, well, at least all we in as a mods know is Rob's like, I made a, I made a fuck up, and it's like, yeah. and he didn't tell us anything until after the event what it was, and I, I think that's good. I, uh, yes, yes, is, oh. I would like in production like that and address it after the event. It's really good. Something that I do think and this for all those techies out there is. Maybe there needs to be a tool where players, especially for events like Hidden Cup, where they can just submit their recs and then it would sort the stuff by its by themselves. Yeah. Because in the rec, it's stored like the times and the winners, and it, I think that's something that may, might be needed, and it, it'd be good for for I can create a database in a sense where like. Where all the regs are stored, obviously we can't really watch them back. That's a different uh, I feel like, issue. Uh, but I feel like it could have been avoided if they just if the players just post like what maps are played as well, though. And then you can like line it up on like once you see like once you have the regs, they can say yeah. like there were six games played. These were the maps. And then yeah, like uh, that, like that whole situation just doesn't happen, you know? Like just with players, because usually when players post regs, it's. They'll post the map draft, they'll post the sub draft, 
and I'll just post yeah. the actual recorded games themselves or in a zip file. They don't actually post it. Usually, I don't, I don't know what the process is for Teenage, like, Hit the Cup. But it's usually not anymore. And, yeah. Maybe. So I, yeah. I mean, like, technically, you can have other mistakes in, 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 like, the order in which the games are presented. Like, say the player uh, misremembers and say, okay, this is this is game two and this is game three. But in actual fact, they were playing you know, in the other... In yeah, the other order, it doesn't change the end result of the match, but it changes the way you're gonna present it, especially in this in this day and age where um the choice mm. of home maps after a game. Maybe you say, oh, like actually they're going into this guy's home map. Uh, he chooses to play his opponent home map, but if there was like a mistake and the games were planned in the other order, that's not the case. So mm. it's it's not a huge deal. Uh, but yeah, may, maybe maybe. Uh, there should be like something where to say okay game one was this game two was this game three blah, blah, blah. it should be time stamped though so yeah if we're, if we're not i think sometimes sometimes the timestamps are uh changed when you rename the rec so i'm not sure it's 100 percent reliable hmm. i also okay. know robo he uses a tool where it, it kind of resets all that data like so that the things are in the right and you can't see oh this is a fake recorded game so it would say like this game was played like say at midnight the next one is a minute after midnight two yeah, minutes yeah, after yeah, midnight. Yeah, so you, you can't even like yeah. yeah and it will tell you like this was the players and like so yeah i mean it, it happens do you want to do you want to know my favorite part of that tool whenever you're casting as a streamer and you find rex you get sent to rex right oh see yeah. uh, there's five files this one's 3.8 megabyte I know it's a relatively short game. This one's seven megabytes. I know it's going to go on longer. <laughs> and maybe it'll be like a 2.5 to the end. I'm like, okay, I know it's going to be a really quick game. So even, like, I don't want to think about it, but I've seen how big the file is. So I already have, like, a predetermined image of, like, what this game is going to look like and when it could potentially end. And I think up, that's also in the... They, they were all 11 megabyte, Every single oh, yeah. one. Which was, yeah, like... that's great. That was, like, really good attention to detail, actually, from, like, the organizers. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that's it for the video, uh, I guess. Uh, okay. it, it's really worth watching. I that is say. Um, for sure. It's actually always worth watching these post-event videos. Um, you let you, le you not learn a lot, but it gives you a different insight on stuff sometimes, which you don't see. You, sometimes you, you just see the um like uh the player's point of view because they are always streaming um, i think i think it's always there. good when it's so like open and honest you know and it's very transparent yeah which it's is always good yeah exactly and hopefully tonight you said maybe it's even cup six we'll see well i mean i think uh, yes. i think there will be another even <laughs> cup they can't not be another even cup even if we had to have to wait five years for it I, there will be another even cup I do. I know it. I think we'll deep, be deep inside. I think we will be waiting. I think <laughs> it's the kind of event you don't want to saturate. You know, I think yeah. more more diversity is always a good thing in terms of like uh, tournaments. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's diversify ourselves then. Let's move on to <laughs> World Rumble, which is going to be hosted by OGN, a Frenchman. So why not have our local Frenchman take us through World Rumble, Mister Tarzis? Yes. <laughs> So World Rumble is the newest installment in the Rumble series uh, hosted by OGN. So the, he calls that the Rumble series. Uh, so essentially uh, tournaments that he has been organizing since I think 2020. Um, usually 16 to 24 player events. He has started like uh, doing them with... Uh, European players only, I think the, the first one was the European Rumble in 2021, and then he's made a few others. Uh, there was the first edition of the World Rumble in 2022, and then there was the Gorilla Rumble at the end of 2022, which was French only, but played uh, LAN in Lyon. So usually the, the format of this will be there's like a group stage that's offline and then there's like a final weekend that's uh, probably from quarterfinals to the final. And he has been streaming those usually from from like a, a studio, like an actual studio broadcast uh, oh. in, in Lyon. Interesting. Usually invites co-casters uh, to be there uh, live with him. So there's like a, 
quite uh, quite a nice production for for the final rounds. Uh, the interesting thing that about this kind of tournaments as well is that usually they are reserved for like what we, we, we would call uh, tier two players. So already for the the first World Rumble, uh, the players who had been invited to KOTD four King of the Desert four were couldn't sign up. Uh, so like the top players like Hera, Viper, etc., couldn't play. But for example, in, in the the first World Rumble was uh, won by Dragon Star against Miguel, and there were other players of like what we would consider probably borderline top ten now. Uh, Barls and Sito were playing, and then there was uh, some other like strong guys, uh, Valus, Classic Bro, uh, Freaking Andy qualified actually. Freaking Andy Margugu qualified for uh, the World Rumble, the first one. Uh, Sebastian, etc. So this is the uh, the newest installment uh, in the series with an uh, $11,000 uh, price pool. And it, it kind of has the same, the same format where top players are not allowed to participate, the very top, top players. So this actually, like this format actually led to some to a little bit of a complaint from some of the players. So initial criteria was that if you had made uh, a top eight finish in any S tier tournament, uh, excluding T19's Titan League, you were not allowed uh, to sign up. So that meant that people like uh, freaking Andy, who'd made a uh, top eight in NAC5, wasn't able to participate. Uh, but then some other guys like uh, Hart, uh, actually probably like the criteria didn't go back in the the Vubli era because uh, Hart yeah, was only top yeah, four the, the that's right, OTD yeah. was able to participate and 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 so on. So there was a little bit of outcry uh, from some of the players, and then the criteria were, were uh, reviewed and unmodified which prevents players with at least two uh, top eight in, in an S tier event in the DE era from uh, participating. So this meant that uh, freaking Andy was able to uh, to participate. I think he's the the most notable one, I think. Uh, Say my the name. Other one who, Yay. <laughs> whom I don't remember any S tier results like in recent years. I think probably that was... Back it's, in the day when he used to be big S tier result that excluded him in the original list was um, the resurgence, which is the lowest oh. price pool qualifier from all those. And that was a tournament where there was no Viper, no Hera, no Leary. I think MBL didn't play in it. I can't remember if it was because he he didn't sign up, uh, like he forgot to check in. No, no, I think the settings were not good. That that was why a lot of these top players did not sign up. This was the reverse pick. I'm pretty sure it was all reverse pick in the resurgence. I think a lot of them were just that like, as well. But that was yeah. also during the AOE four when Viper yes, it was yeah. was yeah, yeah. that. And I think Hera was already back on oh, on Dota back then. Um, so it was on all league. like or oh, league. When, I yeah. I don't know. I, I didn't I don't follow <laughs> like I yeah. I don't really I really follow outside of the AOE and um. But yeah. But basically, I guess Miguel as well. Yes. Miguel was top eight there as well, so he can yeah, probably sign up for World Rumble. Like the settings were very favorable for some underdogs, I think. Or not settings necessarily favorable for underdogs, but like the whole broadly looked at resurgence. Yeah. And that's kinda that's kinda bad for someone like City. You can tell the field is... the field is not really S tier for this one. Oh yeah. no way. No way. And it wouldn't be it wouldn't be S tier if it was made today. Actually, yeah, yeah, but I think probably because the criteria for price pool, not it was 10k back it then. It was 10k uh, then, which was yeah. and it was a lot more like money focused at that point for like yeah. Wikipedia. It was like a lot more. Is that I'm trying to focus less on the money side now? But like if it was the yeah. exact same settings and exact same players, yeah, it wouldn't be S tier. It's kind of yeah, it's kind of not. strange that the resurgence was included in Titans League, it wasn't. I mean, Titans yeah. League even has a bigger prize pool than it. I don't. Really. Yeah, I'm not sure what's the rationale for that. I maybe, don't really understand that. Maybe yeah, because there's I, too many Titan links. Titan League, and I would ex exclude too many players. I don't. No, know. it doesn't like, actually. Three Titan League, I, so. I looked it up. But if it's, it's only, always the same, top it only eight, excludes like and... balls in the end. If you include Titans. Yeah, League. I'm going. I'm checking so... quick, pretty quickly, but yeah. 
So yeah, anyway, yeah. The, the settings were modified and now um, a lot of these guys who were initially not able to participate uh, are able to sign up. The uh, qualified, so like there's eight invited players uh, due to, um, uh, I think I it's mostly ATP. So those players are Barls, Freaking Andy, Hart, probably the clear top three, then Mihai and Sebastian, fresh off um, Hidden Cup 5 participation. And then Kingston, Margugu, and Valis. Uh, then the qualifiers uh, are already underway. Uh, there is some pretty, pretty, pretty strong names in there. Uh, Dragon Star, so winner of the previous edition. Miguel, runner up of the previous one. Genji, also participant in Hidden Cup 5. And then some other, uh, some other names. Uh, Overtaken, Running, uh, Daniel. Who else? Uh, Fire, Classic Pro, <laughs> and some others. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, something to look forward to. Uh, it's going to happen, in something that I think the main event is going to happen in April. And yeah, should be should be good fun. Yeah, I think it's going on for about the full duration of the month for April. Uh, um, talking of players in it, uh, this is the first big tournament where Song Song is participating in in Nations Cup last year. Yeah, I didn't... After that, uh, um, that, what do you call it, incident. Yeah, it, know, it, took, it took me by surprise. I didn't actually, I didn't quite realize he had signed up. And then, yeah, I don't know how I feel about yeah. it, because it's... Like it's meant to be. What is it? It's an event that's meant to be geared towards semi-pro and developing players. And I feel that's... like people do deserve second chances, but I think you know, without getting derailed too much, he's had the second, third chance. I, I, I feel like allowing that kind of entry to someone doesn't quite align with the goals of the tournament if that makes sense yeah uh, my my uh, at least seeing this is he hasn't played competitive OE for nine months um i think it's it, it like at least in a sense like it's not as if he was at tag level cheating stuff right yeah, you you could argue he had a nine month suspension. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah, it's, like, it's a weird and one. Now he's back, and he has a he has a chance again to prove himself that he is not. Well, he lost know, anyway. But... Gonna be yeah, yeah. He's already out, but like a bad apple. Quick, and yeah, also yeah. another player I quickly want to highlight is Overtaken. He's actually had some really good results recently. Um, yeah, he's a gamer. Yeah, um, but yeah. Back to the... He actually he's playing he's gonna play running, and that's a rematch of sudden disaster where he beat him. Yep. So that's gonna be interesting to see how this goes. Uh, I think arena is in the map pool. Yeah, like arena bypass. So, uh, but I mean, technically sudden disaster also has like pretty clownish map pool as well. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. Right. This could be could be this could go either way. Or seems to be playing playing pretty well at the moment, so I wouldn't put it past him to uh, beat running. It wouldn't surprise me. Um, another thing on the players: Nico, Dogal, or kind of disgruntled. Do they have a point? Yeah. That they are not allowed to play, considering their recent performances. What do we I think? I feel like they do. Uh, I, I think this is. This is the the trickiest thing. Uh, I really like this concept of uh, kind of shining a light on like second tier players. But then the question is, uh, how far back do you go? Uh, it's it kind of ties in a little bit with the invite system. Uh, when you think about Hidden Cup four and Hidden Cup five, Hidden Cup four, Hidden Cup five had invites from players based on a result that happened three years ago, mm -hmm. and the last time Dogao made like a, a top a top eight in an SEO event was maybe even Hidden Cup three. And like I don't I don't remember 
when it was. I think for Nikov, it was probably one of the Red Bull events. Uh, so I think probably a little bit more recently. But these guys, these guys lost uh, before even the qualifying match in, in Hidden Cup 5. They both uh, didn't qualify for NEC 5. So yeah, like they have missed at least two uh, SG events in a row. I think Dogao also missed on Warlords 2 events. So it's like it's been three mm -hmm. of them for him. So it's like, yeah, like at which point do you consider that, okay, they they are in the in this like second tier of players. So then the question becomes, are you, do you only focus on like rising stars? And so if you have had this level at any point in the past, are you, uh, are you excluded? Or do you, do you only consider the players who uh, are in the second tier right now? And so, yeah, this is this is complicated. I feel like you know, like fire, fire has been around the scene Forever. for <laughs> a very long time, but he has never been uh, like maybe like he had like bouts of top ten, in, like maybe at NEC two or something like that. But he has never been like very consistently high. It's he he's more like the gatekeeper of the top twenty, something like that. So he's always playing in those events, but I would not consider him a rising star either because he's been there forever. No, so no. yeah, it's like a... He's been around a <laughs> for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lix is playing as well. Same, same, kind of the same uh, concept for him. Dark as well, if you... Like, yep. I feel like Dark is more in this like rising star. Kinda... No, I mean Stark. Um... Oh, Stark, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Stark, Stark, same yeah. thing. God, that would be a nightmare to cast that one. <laughs> Which one? Could you imagine? Stark, Stark versus yeah, Dark. Dark versus Dark. Oh my yes. god. I I hate it when casters just revert to player colors. I feel like that's one <laughs> instance I would I would be I think I would be acceptable then. Yeah, and Stark always used to play in purple, so at least at least he had this like I don't know if he still does it, but he had this kind of identity back in the day. Where, yeah. Anyway. Uh yes. What else did I want to touch on in this? It's kind of like, it's escaping me right now, but I'm not entirely sure what. Um, so yeah, like the, the Dogao and, and Nikov, what's, yeah. what's your opinion on that, maybe, Paradox? Like, I feel like you for... Think they should have part I feel like for Nikov, his like, results are a little bit too much in the recency kind of like bracket for me. Well, this is... This, I, I, I know what I want to say, actually. Like, his results are a little bit too close. They're just a little bit too close to me, but I feel like for Dogal, he has, like, more of a point because he's not been getting results for, like, an extended amount of time, you know? Yeah. And this is the point I wanted to make, was you're always going to have people on the wrong side when you, like, have these kind of criteria and people that are going to be upset. So it's really where you're trying to draw these lines is the most important thing. And do I think Dogal and Nikov should probably be in the event? I think for if you if it's geared towards semi pros, I would probably say absolutely not because I've kind of had their moment. No offense to them, even even if they're not in form right now. But it, I think they have a legitimate reason to be upset because of the lines that have been drawn when they're not including if they include like events like the resurgence and then don't include. Uh, Titans League and their criteria. Yeah, to me that would say that to me that was sets really poorly from like their perspective, and I, I understand why they'd be upset because it's like, well, I feel like that's questionable, and if you can question one thing, I think it gives you an avenue to question other things because that's just how that's just how these kind of things work, you know. Like it makes you it makes you wonder what else could be done and and. Uh, incorrect fashion. I like. I'm not going to say it's incorrect, but I don't particularly agree with with that. Especially, I think the format is fantastic. I love that what the event targets and what it's trying to do, but it's still like a process of like working out the best way to do it. And I think, from what I've been told, it's been extremely rushed because didn't hear back from Microsoft until very late. They had like week long sign up. And there's probably been a lot of stuff that's been out of their control too, just to get like the event on the go. So I feel like that's a very important part of the conversation as well. 
think they got the green light like three days before the announcement. And from what I read online, um, it's something that's been in conversation for an hour, an hour, a year, <laughs> an hour, <laughs> a year. So it's not uh, like uh, Microsoft haven't had like the heads up in the tournament and whatnot. So it almost feels like a grand melee moment. Um, not not good for the no. kind of like ecosystem, the sustainability <laughs> having like yeah. tournaments announced. So there's so little time. It's a shame. It's, yeah, especially if somebody uh, was going on holiday, like say this week, then they couldn't be, um, you know, they couldn't participate in this. Especially like Specific. Seth Hart was going some exactly. somewhere, like he was traveling to Europe. He wants to visit Italy for whatever reason, and then he suddenly can't. And it's not something is like you can just cancel. A trip flights are expensive, hotels are expensive, yeah. like all like that. Um, so and it's a big prize. Ideal. It'd be a sh- it'd be a shame for like a semi pro player to miss out because of just the circumstance and how it was being announced. You know, like eleven thousand dollars, one hundred and eleven. I don't even know what I'm saying there, but it's it's five once. So that's what it is. That's a prize pool. Right. It's, it's a decent chunk. Yeah. Eleven thousand one hundred and eleven. Yeah. That's, that's a- and it's. It's not like there's so many events of this of this scope and scale, so missing out on even one of them, I think it has to hurt for yeah, like players who whose like kind of livelihood depends on it. They're both streamers, uh, so I guess it's. But still, uh, for the scene, it's tricky. Uh, I I think it's it's a, a difficult question, uh, and I don't think there's any way that everybody's gonna be happy. No. I think that's maybe a a good place to close off in World Rumble. What do you think? Yeah, that's it, the only things I have to say is a different discussion uh, completely. So, <laughs> well, maybe we'll get to it. Maybe we won't. Okay, let's move on to Queen's Clash. So we're on to Queen's Clash. I think it was free now, right? Which is hosted yes. by Age of Queens, and kind of similar to what World Rumble does, they have a very particular kind of like subset of players that they're aiming it towards. World Rumble tries to go to semi pro players. Queens Clash, if you've not figured that already, is geared towards females only. And this was well, it's been an event that's been dominated by Gabby in the previous editions. Uh, Gabby's two K three, I would have to guess Brazilian. Very player. high rated. I think just about 2k3, but been around for quite a number of years now, right, Gabby? Yeah. I would say so. Uh, I was... I was hard... Hyper about her for, for a long time already. Yeah, yeah. And there's a new hype developing, because we have Guki made it to the final with uh, alongside Gabby, so we've got two very other similar names. Uh, Guki is from Mexico, and she's actually very, very young. Plays for Combi, 15, and a bit of a rising star herself. I think if I remember when I looked at our Ailey 2 insights, went on her profile like a year ago, she was about 1300. Might even be in less time than that. I can't remember the exact, like, uh, I can't remember it was exactly on the scale, but it was a very quick time frame. She's been on the rise from 1300 to 2k2 now. And uh, she did take the win in the end over Gabby in the final, but it didn't, it did come with. With some complications because we had a game that was getting played on shows, um, that was getting casted on the main channel of Age, Age of Queens. Mem raided not too long before he was casting some of it himself and he decided to send everyone over to their channel. And they had a disconnect in the final, and the disconnect came from Guki, and she was winning in the game, so they had to power shut off, which hap- happens way more regularly. In, South America and Central America than I think Europeans realize. Because honestly, I don't know the last time I power shot off. It's like a very privileged thing to like have, but it seems to happen all the time for like. I feel like honestly, nearly every like second tournament or third tournament, Fireside is like its power or internet turned off. I feel like this happens all the time, like South America and Central America. I, I I understand the situation, and it, I think is it, it's the same for you, right? In like South Africa, no? Yeah, we have uh, 
a rolling power outages. So you have three sessions inside, at least for us, like we have three sessions a day, two, two and a half hours, though in our area, they only keep it two hours where you don't have electricity. And then that's like space every six hours, which is, it's rough, especially like if you want to play AOE, you have to constantly think uh, like, oh, I have schedule in your day. Yeah. Around. Yeah. Like play around this. And sometimes they would go 15 minutes before and it's like, oh, this is now a four hour long session because there were other like uh, disruptions somewhere. And then you suddenly have to sit there. You can't you can't really prepare for stuff like that, and so it's rough. it's rough. So like I I can I I understand I can understand frustrations that yeah. So like, gig gig players... power went off, and yeah. the players the both of the Gabby and Guki both agreed to just do a restart on the map. So they decided to start afresh on Schultz. Uh, so Guki did have a, a relatively good lead and had a lot of map control, and it looked like. I seen I seen a quote of maybe like ninety like ninety percent plus uh, going to be winning that game. They decided to restart, and <laughs> this is a funny thing when you go for a restart. I think it's very much like a rock paper scissors situation. Like if you're if you're winning, you're probably going to think that you want to stay. So if you go rock and you win, you're probably like, okay, I know that works. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to that. So Gookie thinks she's going to stay with the same strategy, whereas Gabby. Probably knowing she was teetering on the edge of a defeat. Uh, I'm probably not going to use scissors anymore and I want to go papers. I want to change up my strategy. And that's, that's exactly what she done. She done like some crazy sneak on Shoals, which if you've ever seen Shoals, it's a map with the water in the middle and the goals to the side. It's used in the Empire Wars a bit. But a sneak stable and a sneak range in the back of her base ended up winning the game that way. And the game was long, the previous one. It went for more than like an hour. So it was like a completely different game. And it just kind of like, man, the Queen's Clash, uh, sorry, the, the Age of Queen's Twitch chat went into like meltdown because you've got like, you've got the Brazilians and you've got the Mexicans there and they're both going after each other. And I'm like, oh my God, this is just going insane. And it was, uh, it, it, it was a messy situation in terms of like the chat. But the end of the day was the, the two players agreed to go for a restart. And that's like, Nothing else really matters all that much, to be honest. Like, if they both said yes, that's fine. Then who really cares what 50 angry chatters have to say? Yeah, it's, it's a rough situation. Uh, and also... Yeah, I think it ended in the best way possible. <laughs> Like imagine, so yes. Gucci still ended up winning the the whole the whole final. But imagine if she ends up losing the final despite being like on the verge of like, I think she had match point when when on on the game yeah. that she was if winning. She if she, she won, did, yeah, she so, was match point. Yep. Yeah. So that's like that's also even like trickier because I think there would have yeah, been more drama if that happened. There would have been a lot more drama. I think this this. They were lucky that she ended up winning migration in the end and and winning the event because otherwise, yeah, it's it sucks. It's, uh, it's it's also a tough situation if you're an admin. And it right? sucks that we don't have like a re re reliable way of like uh, restoring. Uh, no, it doesn't work. That's also weird, like how it works. If if the game, like basically, if the game just closes, it doesn't create the restore file. Um, so Smart. then you can like if you if you have an out of sync or a your internet drop you can still restore but if your game just completely shuts down it's it doesn't create anything on either side but i i mean that also makes sense right if you lose power on your pc there's no time for it to it's not constantly creating a, that save file right it's only for the restore file it and but this is also where I I can't remember because it's been how long ago it was. Is do I can't remember if we got a restore file on back on UC for the same reason, like in that same that very specific situation where you lose power, right? Mm -hmm. If it didn't also had the same thing, so I don't want to say, oh yeah, thanks DE for this, 
specifically because yep. I I'm pretty sure I've had I remember once there was a tournament where there was no resource there was like no restore file um back in the day. I, but uh, like it's very I can't I can't remember it, but it, it, it's a very shitty situation. And then it's rough for the admins and they don't always have a protocol for if that happens because I don't think it happens that much these of a, days anymore. It's a bit of a judgment but call it, as well. It's a difficult thing to say. Like we had the similar situation yeah. with uh Mexico and Taiwan and Nations Cup with the Team Islands game. I think it was Kingston's power that went out and like Taiwan were kind of winning, but it was still nowhere close to being over. So it was like Daniela made a really good point and I kinda remember I think it was a Discord she was having this conversation. And it was like, e- like even if they're like super close to winning, can you really give them the win? I, t- to me, as someone that's admin, I feel like if it if it's like extremely obvious, like a massive pop difference, all these different things, I would be comfortable saying yes. But even as like a counterpoint that she made, it was like it's maybe just like a half jokey but half serious comment. She said, "Anto deleted fifty arps in the game." And you just you just never know what could happen, and I was like, it did make me think about it because <laughs> it's a very extreme example, but it has happened in a game before. Yeah. Uh-huh. So where where do you draw the line in terms of like being able to give a victory? And I feel like that line is way further than a lot of players would even expect. Like you have to be wait, you have to be so far ahead to be able to say, "Yep, yeah, okay, I'm gonna give you the win for that one." <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a tough call. Back when I used to do tourneys, it was I just say, "Go play the next game, Get, come back to it with a fresh mindset." Because if you're in that situation, like I just played this map, maybe I don't even like the map. It was my opponent's own map, and now I have to go play it again. Yeah, yeah. I, it, 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 like it's 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 very tough. But I think just in general, like, when stuff like that happens, is an admin needs to just like just take five minutes. Yes, like tell both players take five minutes, calm down because especially it's if it's a final, you re, you 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 can get really psyched out, psyched out or worked up about stuff if it's if something's just going against you, like mm-hmm. um, you just like calm get something like calm down. And then we take it from there. Maybe play the next map. That's why I first. like moving on to the next map, to be honest. Yeah, and because then, it kind of you... like it goes for a reset, and you can just kind of forget. Like it's not natural yeah. in a tournament to play the same map twice in a row. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. And you could ask quickly going back to an Cub Vibe and Gary played on the wrong map for forty minutes before they noticed. Oh, there's no relics on the middle <laughs> islands. Um, which, oh. uh, like, how does that affect the mental game of Viper and Leary? Especially because Viper thought he was winning, Leary thought it was even. You know, like, mm. I don't know. I've not seen the game. It, it, it uh, like, it, I think it does play a mental thing. Sometimes the uh, just having a drop can help you also reset. But um, yeah, <laughs> it, like it if depends some... on. If someone drops, sorry, or if someone uh, you have to restore, it gives you time to like just think about the game. Or if someone just pauses yeah. as well, <laughs> sometimes it's a really good opportunity just to like stop, like a stop and standstill moment, and like think about what's actually going on and what your next steps are going to be. Because it's such a fast paced game, a lot of the time you don't really get that allowance to do so. But yeah, I, I, I do think like if there's situations like these, it just needs to be a opportunity for both players to, you know. Just let them take five minutes. Even if it delays the show, nobody's gonna be angry about it yeah. as a viewer. Although and there might be the few special people out there, but you can get rid of them in chat. <laughs> um, it's it's fine if there's a small delay. Just get you want both players at their top, right? And mm-hmm. you don't want to see somebody unravel because something went not. Can I say uh, according to what you would normally expect to happen. Like, you know, just play the game out and then suddenly you can't. Another reason I like next maps, also from an admin perspective, because there might be like a situation where somebody's not been able to like contact another one and they might need, they might just simply need time to make a decision. 
or to make the like the best decision that they can. They just need to like actually think about it a little bit more and have a little bit of debate. And if they just move on to the next map, and it might not even come into play. But then you have maybe a question of like, oh, maybe the result is going to affect it afterwards. It's, it's, a tri uh, it's just a very tricky situation. I don't, I still don't know what's the best solution. And it is in theory abusable as well. Like someone could maybe just be losing a game. I'm just like, oh, I'm just going to turn off my PC. That's very like juvenile and teenager-ish, but. I, I, there might be some. There might be someone that, that but... there might be someone that does it, you know? I don't. I I don't think in a big tournament we'll have at least of the the players who, that we know, right? Um, I don't think anyone is that childish to just. Oh yeah, I'm gonna turn off my power, which is. Do we not? Do we know um, any top players that play people? No. <laughs> to be. That's a, that's FIFA rage kit behavior. That's what that is. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't. I don't think any. I can't see anyone doing that. It may be a few who you know uninstalls the game after <laughs> losing an important uh, set, but um, I don't think I don't, I don't know of anyone that's really oh being like that or oh, abusing like something like this. Oh, I am losing. Let's turn on my PC. Um, I don't think this uh watch how somebody is gonna do this now next year yeah. or something yeah, my and God. Very important set, uh, just because we talked about this <laughs> now, i wonder i wonder if it's in the actual like the saved file though if someone turned like what actual information is in there if someone you know for like the game ending it's just like no a lot idea. if it's just like a lost connection i don't know i actually don't know but i'd be interested to try and find that out. i'm not sure Okay, even amidst uh, all the drama, it was still a very successful tournament. I think it ended up about 1500 on the prize pool. So it was probably just a little bit short of it's like 2k, 2k ish for around about 80 but I don't know if it would make it simply just because it was female only. But uh, Queen's Clash is pretty important for the tournament scene for all the female players, uh, gives them a chance to shine. And in a gaming space, it's very male dominated. And I think still quite a few of us are a bit I'm trying to think of the best words here. Um, there is a few people that are still a bit backwards in their thinking. I'm not going to name any names, but there's a couple of people on Twitter mm -hmm. that are not too positive about Queen's Clash and whatnot. And I think ugh, it's very. It's very, it's very odd to me to try and like rail on an event like this when I think it has such a positive impact, uh, and not just for like the top players. They have like this was gold league, a silver league, and a bronze league. I think for Queen's Clash, so it's it's a tournament for every it's, level essentially. I think it. I think it's good. It's, it. it we get like um, oh, I don't I don't know what it's not. <laughs> but it, it's it's good because it also creates its own in a, in a way like it creates its own community and having people um play in that community as well. If it, like I I'm, I'm, I'm I've not I've not really thought about it this much, but I think I do think it is it, it is important. It gives um. As a female player, not always, you know. Can I say welcomed? I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna name who, but there was somebody who once said this was this was in the early age of Queen's days. They made a comment like, "Um, I've never had a um tournament. Oh, like anyone can sign up for my tournaments, and then my next tournament I'm hosting is gonna be for male only players." <laughs> and I was like, I I was actually shocked at it. It's a very, that was a very big no no kind of comment, um, that I was really like, I won't name the person. It's very, it's actually, it's very revealing it when like, you see stuff like this, isn't it? It was actually a big streamer. 
I'm like if, if that yeah like whoever was around when the person said that will know who I'm talking about it was really mm. I, was, I was really taken aback by it um I do but yeah I do think it's it's good um we don't it it show it also in a way shows that like I don't know there's a what do you there's a place for you know female players in the game right yeah. because you don't they, like especially because it's very male dominated and it, like show like it shows like oh you can you can also be part of this the broad sense of the community right mm -hmm. um, while giving them their own kind of platform within the whole system exactly. yeah it's great it's great and, and we get two really top players there and i'll be interested to see especially I feel like maybe Gabby's. I don't want to say she's plateaued. I'm sure she can still improve a little bit, but the way Gookie's improved in the last kind of like twelve months, it's kind of interesting to think like how good he could actually end up, considering her age yeah. and how much he's improved already. So, so like uh, to to piggyback on that, she actually won the last edition of the Queen's Clash, uh, Silver League. So she went from winning this. To now winning the the main event, uh, well the the higher division this year. I guess that's that's really impressive. Yeah, <laughs> like I guess the next the next step for her would be like trying to get a deep run and some qualifiers or something. Yeah, like maybe TTL Gold League could be something that she could potentially aim for, but we're not going to have TTL, so it's kind of so hard she, to know what to aim for for as a player yeah. actually. I think like like the next next step would probably be Latin America A tier. Uh, you know, like there was this. Uh, they they have a lot of tournaments that are usually only for Latin America. So they mm -hmm. had the Copa Three K that was won by Heart a couple couple months ago. I think she was in the qualifiers of that. I think she beat uh, Husiel and maybe lost to FedEx if I'm not. Uh, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, she beat Husiel 2 1, then lost 3 1 to FedEx. So, like, pretty decent result there. Uh, and then she participated in the uh, the Mexican uh, LAN, uh, the, the Copa Mexico. Uh, I think she lost to Kingston, but also, like, had some good results against other 2K players. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's the next type, or maybe TTL next season, something like that. We'll and yeah, I'm 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 super interested detail. to see how far she can climb because like I think uh, one year ago she was 1700, 1600, 1700. Now she just reached two K two, and like you said, she's super young. So yeah, can only go up from here. Um, For sure. Yeah. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see like how her like how she develops from this like from this position it's a really like this is a really good platform um to to work from i i, I guess the question is like just where where's your where are your motivations as a 15 year old and life is a 15 year old you have a lot bouncing around you yeah. like you know so it's a, it's a <laughs> yeah. tricky one it's she could probably be as good as she wants to be as long as she like as long as she was like wants to work at that but you know at that age there's no guarantee <laughs> you might just you might be away at something else very quickly. Life comes at you fast at that age. Mm-hmm. In that Copa Mexico, by the way, Adam... So, Guki got free owed by Kingston. Adam actually took two games off of Kingston in that one. And then took two games yeah. off of Uzi in the third place game. That's insane. Oh, that's a great performance. It's a, an old-school player for a lot of people. Yeah, two admin wins in the first two rounds. So was... Yeah, that's what I was remembering as well. Like, <laughs> he he kind of got through with through admin wins, and then and then uh, eventually and then he played super up. well. And then you're yeah, yeah, loving it. Maybe he's hiding all those strats. Two, two admin wins into three game, three sets in a row where he went to the final game. <laughs> it's a good performance, man. Okay, staying with our kind of Latin theme, I guess we'll move on to your mem announcement. Look at coming this Sunday. Um, you wanna kind of talk us through this panda? What it could be? What it couldn't be? 
what are we kind of expecting? First off, don't be a potato like me. I just saw premiere eight o'clock my time, and I thought it was tonight. So I was getting, I was just like yes, and then when I was <laughs> like yeah, and then paradox brought me back down to us like only Sunday. It's like oh damn it, <laughs> four to six uh, hours. Yeah, I th- uh, but but sad. I wanted to know what it is. But so, what could it be? What could it not be? I doubt it's gonna be Pearl of Africa. Mem's been kind of. I think he is maybe a bit demotivated. Not that it's necessarily something to be demotivated about, but like every Battle of Africa final has been aftermath and Gamer Legion, or before that was Secret, and the other time they played, they were. No, no, no. They 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 played. It was. I think it was. Yeah, it was Tyrant. Secret and then <laughs> Game Allegiance. So the 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 group, the core group of players have been switching teams during each event. I might be wrong now about that, but whatever. Um, which I can understand. You know who's going to play in the final, and then you it it might be get boring. Always seeing like you see these two teams dominate, and then go to the end. And it's a risk. You might think, uh, yeah, it's a risk. Yeah, hosting a team game tournament in a team format, like. And then also, like, what? let's say one of those teams have a bad day, and then they lose, and then you don't have your best two teams in the final, and then there's already this argument where that team game tournaments don't get the same amount of view numbers, and they're more chaotic, and that, and that might draw people away. I actually don't think it would make a difference, but that's that's my opinion. Mm-hmm. And now, recently, we had Hera leaving AM for, uh, for GL. Um, so... Very big. What now? Uh, he is a corp, like he's a really core cool part of the team. Or well, he was um, a very core cool part of the team. So we can, um, so that it definitely does weaken them. Even if, like, they on the GL side might be like, no, it doesn't really because other players are really good and that. But uh, you you probably have one of the best pocket players in the world suddenly leaving you, that does put a, a that's a big, big thing. Like that's big. Those are big shoes to fill. Um, mm-hmm. And like specifically yeah, for like Boa as well, that is typically where yeah. Hera would play, Especially, be playing in pocket. Yeah. For 3v3s as well. It's a very important position. Um, So yeah, I don't think it's going to be Battle of Africa. He's... Unless Mem maybe he goes with a draft style tournament. Maybe. Uh... Although, yeah, I mean, doubt it. I doubt. That, I doubt it. Be... I don't love it for like an international tournament as well, just because all the different languages makes it really difficult. But it seems like yeah. he said like quite loudly a couple of times that Boa he's not really interested in doing it. So yeah, it's been for... every time I've heard him like talk about it, he hasn't seen. It's not very positive. Like... No. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna. Be warlords three, it's a bit too soon. Feels too <laughs> soon. Even, it's, it's been four months since the last one, so that automatically rules that out. Could it be king of the desert six? Question mark. Um, I feel like it's. I, mean, I feel like it's also just too soon. But it's been a year. I feel like that's too year, soon. Maybe. And yeah, I think, I especially guess. for like a single map tournament, especially king of the desert, which is not. What what what's changed? We've got like a couple of new subs, and I I, I I just don't think it'd be all that much different. I'd ra- yeah, I, I I want something it new. Excite me. Yeah, actually, don't you think we've had the whole monk and light cav meta kind of take off since KOTD five? I don't feel like it was the case that much in KODD5. It was starting to become a thing, I think, in it. And, and now it has become the main meta, even on open maps. And now it's been, and like very recently it was like nerfed again. So maybe it's not so much the meta. I don't know. I don't know what's no, the currency of the meta. But it will. Yeah. I don't know. I want, I want something shiny, you know? I want. <laughs> I, I I kind of also feel the same. I'm not single map tournaments. Just like 
eh, for me. Maybe, I maybe agree. it's. Well, I want to say maybe it's a team game tournament, but like yeah, it needs to be some different flavor to it. But I don't also don't see how why. So me, I'm I'm ready to be excited or be surprised. But you also like rather play it safe. You know, um, keep with King of the Desert. It is Mem's biggest event. Um, yes. Yeah. So. And it's usually in summer as well, right? This is the thing. Or like summerish mm -hmm. kind of time. What I do wonder, maybe. Yeah. No, I, I have. I, I don't have. I, like. I, other than that, I don't have any ideas. Maybe, maybe it's to announce his. Patreon. Oh, <laughs> that, that, that would be a bit of a bummer, but uh, I, doubt, I doubt he would do that because he already has it in his stream title. I mean, Jordan did Patreon. it. Jordan did it with merch. Do you remember that announcement? Which one? Jordan, yes. Jordan said he had an announcement this one time, right? And everyone started going crazy. This is when AOE Zone was still a bit more active. Like, oh, I wonder what Jordan <laughs> announcement is going to be. Is it going to have like another tournament? Is it going to be it, like all these wild theories going around? And uh, Jordan had the stream. He's like, yeah, I've got a merch shop. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Yeah, no, I don't. I, I don't. I don't think it's something like that. Um, maybe, maybe actually, you know what? Maybe members finally secured all the funding needed to host the LAN event that he wants to host. Oh, now, now, now we're theorizing. Now, now we're definitely yeah, getting into something. Now, that could be that would be in that would be really fun, but I also think it clashes a bit with having Red Bull this year because it's so much planning and you know finding the right time slot. I assume he knows roughly when it might happen, um, or when it will happen, so he could plan accordingly. But it is uh, it is definitely a lot of work. I think I think we're pushing it. We might be pushing it a mm -hmm. bit with a LAN thing but depending on red bull's gonna be but i think they've typically been october time if i remember right yeah i do think though this announcement is for something that starts after world rumble so it's not gonna like it's that that kind of rules out a land event mem likes uh, he's usually like announcing his stuff like a month beforehand i'm um, like before the qualifiers start Mm -hmm. Um. So I think I think maybe it's gonna be something. I think maybe maybe surprises. Uh, or maybe it's uh, the two uh, two months ahead. But I, I think that's also pushing it a bit. So I I am expecting it's gonna be his big his big event for this year. Mm -hmm. And he, he was quite good the last time with War Awards, uh, the second one, in terms of like given a formal announcement. And having a pretty decent lead in time to it. But I wonder if it's going to be like the same thing as, this, as the last time. I'm hoping yeah, for. Yeah, he had, a re he had a really good lead time. Yeah, yeah. Loads. Like, no messing around with like, like, I'm going to do an announcement in two weeks. Even this one, still an announcement of an announcement, but at least it's only waiting a couple of days, you know? It's not like you're teasing yeah. people for like ages. God, that drives me mad. <laughs> um, I, I, I think hope what he did even more. Yeah, I hope I'm surprised. That's 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 just what I was gonna finish with. Mm -hmm. If it's King of the Desert, I would like the map to be to be a bit. I I can't even say to be a bit more diverse because I don't think you can do that on Arabia or any Arabia style map. I think we've reached the point where the meta at the top level is all gonna be about execution. 95 percent of the time and so you we are like at least for me it, it like a single map tournament kind of gets repetitive mm -hmm. because it's the same type of mm -hmm. strategies but i think we've reached a place in the in the competitive scene where it's kind of the only thing you could play like that like you know play that specific format you know like, or not format even... but like style even like an equivalent of Walhalla, but with open maps instead, uh, okay. I think would be like an improvement on Arabia only, even if it's like most open maps tend to play the same way. 
I think it'd be more exciting already. So like Serengeti. Yeah, yeah, like Serengeti, uh, what Acropolis, Atacama, you know, like all those like very open, aggressive maps. Just like make it masters of open maps or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> masters <laughs> or of fi- open. like a, 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 a better name. But... Masters of openness. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> masters of I don't, like masters of the desert. I don't like something like that. You know, like there's there's definitely yeah. different names you could give it. I, like to me, that that is much more is much more of an interesting prospect. Even if it is just all land maps, what was what did yeah. we have before? Was was it only land cup that had just land maps? It was a was that not a French tournament as well? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, only land. Can I remember who hosted yeah. that? Uh, was it uh, two two asylum? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But even that, it had Maya. That's a no man map. Hang on, I had kind mired. Of. Yes. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, had some. I had wings. That's the Red Bull map without the pond. And it had it had it had uh, close maps as well. It was not only yeah. open end map. So. But yeah, you can you can work with that. Like you have land madness, you have a clever team games. A boom. I actually yeah, like that. I, I know yeah. it's not necessarily some people's favorite because it's kind of like oh, you're just called A man. That, but I, I think I think it can it can provide those more all in aggressive style things. There's there's another Red Bull map that I'm thinking about, which I have not really seen in random map. That's also like super super open. It's the wings? Um, no, 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 no. It's uh, it starts with an M. Uh, I can't remember it now. Oh, Meadow from Red Bull Two. Meadow, Meadow yeah, is uh, med- yeah. open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you the had map, to like... go pretty far for a wood, and so it was super exposed. Yeah. And you had like kind of a a heel like... for your TC. Yeah, that could be. That could be it. Um, although I have a. Th- I have, I think maybe no no never mind that's uh I was I was thinking of something different but yeah like it could I think that could be interesting having you know like open an open map uh, tournament there's even some maps we've not seen like Badlands and yeah. that's that was a map I I think in Jordan's like weekly tournament that he hosted. Two years ago, oh, there, that was a map. It, there were some it, good was maps really in GMB. Good. Yeah, there's, 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 there's actually a lot of unexplored maps that are really good that aren't played a lot or have never been played at the highest level. I think that could be explored. You, you don't always need to go search for completely new maps. Even um, mm-hmm. there are there are some hidden gems there that haven't been played yet, which are really fun. Or could be fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just looking at the last one for uh, G- GMB. It's got sunburn in there, so that's a map. I love that map. <laughs> the sunburn yeah. essentially looks like Arabia. But down the middle is a big strip and some wood. It's wood, right? And then they have like the TCs yeah. like super close, mm. so. Uh... It's like it's like front line with a wood line through the places. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, it's an interesting looking map. A uh, t- a team game map for ECL. Yeah. Yes, that was the first time. It's another Cruzini map. Yeah. Surprise! You surprise. The, uh... <laughs> I think it, it was it was so it was considered so good that it was added to the the main map pool and another map. Uh, so like I won the. Well, he it won a bit, but it won yeah one of the map making contests in ECL. The other map was Ta- is Taz's favorite map, Dry River. Was it that one? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, oh. a little disgusting map. Oh, that free fish man! I never thought that was a. Like, these are good ideas. Oh, tanks made the Dry River. What? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. can blame him yes. for that. He also he also made the best map in existence, Vulcan Crater. <laughs> Sorry, it's, what? It's like, so it, <laughs> yes, it's like Socotra on crack in the early stages, at least. Like it's like a mix of Africa, African water and Frontline. 
no, 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 not not front line, border dispute. Yeah. So you yeah, basically like... start less than a screen away from your opponent, and there's like kind of a crater in the center that has, I don't know, like ten thousand food in in hunt. <laughs> it's quite a lot. <laughs> Sorry, wait, what, uh, so what, you what is the name like of this map? Just Vulcan, Vulcan Yeah, okay. I guess it's a gym. Uh, I'm going to have to... I'm, only for research purposes, I'm going to have to look this up. I'm definitely not going to. Yeah. I'll, I'll send you the link. It's. Oh, God. That sounds like something else. Maybe Mem can have that. In. Maybe Mem can have that. In. Yeah. I think Panda and I played a few maps in a few games. On this yeah, one. yeah, we had it in... One of uh, our T90 journeys. Yeah, yeah. Vulcan yeah. Crater, yeah, it must be like German or something. Okay, well, as we're theorizing about tournaments, should we kind of move on to our, our next little, little topic? Yeah. And I guess I've put in my sheet here what returning S tier could break Kara's dominance, but I guess it could be really could be a what, new what, what could yeah what could what what tournament what could, could do break Kara's dominance yeah what could what could do that what do we think Tarsus do you want to kind of lead us in with this one yeah so like uh, I'll start with this uh, of the past six S tier tournaments Hera has won them all so I think this is uh, this is the longest uh, S tier uh, win streak in the DE era for sure. This is also probably the second longest S tier uh, streak since Viper's best streak, which was a streak of eight events from October 2013 to April 2019. Uh, Harris is just uh, a year, so it was March 23 to March 24. But yeah, he has won every single last year uh, of the past year. He has, during, in this process, he has won 38 matches and lost only three. Uh, three of which were non elimination matches, obviously. Uh, and won 75% of all games he had played during that time. So yeah, his domination at the moment is uh, really impressive, probably unprecedented before well since that's a strong Vipers, word man uh, that's a strong word biggest years <laughs> that's uh, a strong uh, word of, dom of dominance uh and yeah like the the, the question is what what kind of is there is there any way that someone else becomes better is there any settings maybe in which Hera would uh, struggle and not uh, win so before we get uh we get into the discussion i'll I have some stats for you guys so i looked at the games that Hera lost during that streak and the events where he had been more or less dominant uh, so like his most dominant event was King of Desert 5 when uh, he won 8 matches lost 0 uh, only dropped 6 games out of 34 so that's like 82% uh, win rates in terms of games his least dominant event during that streak was Warlord 2 where he uh, he won six matches, lost one of them against Yo in the group stage, and ended up with like a 66% uh, win rate in games. Still won the event in the end. And then, yeah, a couple of other events in there. Uh, so like for, for reference, the streak goes from NAC4 in March 23 to Hidden Cup 5 included in March 24. Uh, so like I looked at the games he lost, uh, for NAC4, it looked to be hybrid and closed maps. Then it changed a little bit for TTL Season 3. Lost a bit of coastal mountains, uh, migration. Never, never. I think, lost a map. To, I think, yeah, in TTL 3, he only lost coastal mountains twice. Then he never lost any other map more than once. Then Warlords 2, he lost a bunch of Nomad and some Chaos maps. Mm. And then NAC5, it was Hippopotamus and... In Cup 5, it was Bay that he lost more than once. So, kind of a, a mixed bag in there, but it looks like maybe like his only weaknesses at the moment are Nomad and Chaos maps. Uh, still, if there is, let, let's say there's like a Wandering Warriors Cup 2 now, or let's say Masters of Sokotra, th Sokotra 3, 
do you think Hera wins? Do you think he doesn't? Like, uh, what are your thoughts on that, guys? I think a lot of it depends on the maps and how they're scripted. Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, Socotra is just a bigger map now, isn't it? Socotra is just. Maybe... You can easily fix Socotra. Um, it needs to be fixed. Back how it used to be. It does need um, fixed. It's a little bit too big now, so it's very kind of just Arabia like at the moment as Socotra. It's barely even a chaos map now. It's quite sad, actually. It feels like. They've butchered, they've butchered their body. I think Masters of Socotra 2 already, people were a bit more yeah. playing it safe. Yeah, um, and like the first one was great, that was the thing. And I think people were expecting like the same result with Masters of Socotra 2, and it just kind of like... And it wasn't all there, which was a bit unfortunate, you know? I... I... Th I th not to make it a Masters of Socotra discussion but i think even if you play on the old map it will still have the same kind of end result like very a bit more on the safe side yeah on tc castle age play like maybe a big feudal age like skirms and towers and stuff but like the early like the what made it so crazy early is just it's just too 50 50 i think you want you'd rather play it safe um but to get to what can break Hera's dominance, maybe a closed map tournament, if the prize pool is big enough to entice him to sign up. So he didn't do the last more, we... right? No. Yes, I but I th he was also traveling at that, I think. Yeah, he was. But did, um, did he do Valhalla? I don't remember him doing Valhalla as well, right? I can't remember. I think Valhalla might have been during his break. So this this is the thing. Maybe that Maybe that is actually... I actually wouldn't mind a Walhalla. So he didn't play Walhalla. And yeah, Master of Arena 7, he didn't play either. Yeah. I think. yeah. So maybe maybe that's another thing. Uh, Wanderers Warrior Cup 2 is definitely another thing as well. I think not just because maybe it's a potential weak spot of Harris, but it's also a strength. It's, it's, it's probably a strength for other top players. Like a Mr. Yo. Especially um, for a Viper, for a Tattle. I think those kind of maps do cause a skill difference a little bit. I th do agree, but I, th I think if the prize pool is big enough, like if it's a, a steer with the prize pool, you'll dedicate. Yeah, a lot so of that's. Time into but it. actually, I would be, I'll be, I'll be really interested to see that. Like, give me like a a thirty k. Closed maps or Wallala. nomad map tournament and see Hera like try hard because I think like maybe he has a relative weakness in those kind of maps. But I think like looking at the games he lost, uh, it feels like it's different from tournament to tournament. So it, he doesn't have any like glaring weakness that he had a year ago that he still has now. Uh, if we if if we look at the results again, like uh, in NSC four hybrid maps were kind of where he lost a bunch of of games, and now it feels like he's in the probably ball. the best hybrid <laughs> map player in in the world. Uh, if you look at Hidden Cup five, he's like absolutely dominating on 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 Cup, uh, and 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 like evacuation as well, and this kind mm -hmm. of map. So. Uh, I'd be interested to see, like, yeah, give me a close maps tournament and see Hera learn to dominate arena and, and the likes. I feel like he's probably already gonna be really solid on maps like Hideout, where it's more geared towards late game and you'd let you'll have like probably like fewer clownish games. Uh, maybe arena uh, be like a, a relative weakness. Uh, I don't know. I I I think he would still win probably considering how good he is, but maybe it would be closer at least. And yeah, the the question mark for me is still kind of like Red Bull as well, since he didn't I mean he didn't actually win a Red Bull. Yeah, and that was Empire Wars. But Empire Wars is is the next Red Bull going to even be Empire Wars? I think that's really up for debate at the moment as well. So. Yeah, I kind of want to 
there's part of me that wants to see it be Empire Wars, just to see if Hera, like, I, I'm like pretty sure that Hera would win, but then there's always that kind of, like, there's always that thing in the back of my mind that he hasn't actually done it yet, and I kind of, I, I kind of want to see it just to confirm it. Yeah. I think he's probably, he, he's definitely by far the best performer of Red Bull that hasn't won a Red Bull. Oh, for sure, and yeah. I think, and I think he's probably ahead of Doubt and Taro in general as well. He's made two finals that he lost 4-3 against Leary. And then he made, I think, at least... And he, I think he made semis at every event. Or maybe not the, the one Viper won where he lost against uh, NBL. That was he made semis everywhere else. Yeah, I think it was quarters he got knocked out, right? Yeah. So... I think... That'd be that'd be interesting to see, but I think he would probably win this one. Yeah, the, that, but who knows? Maybe maybe Leary comes back and wins in a decisive game once again. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the question for me you... is: Would I rather see nine bells, or would I rather just see Empire Wars, despite it being a little bit dead? Is that I feel like it's only going to be one of those two options? I think. Not sure whether there's no way they're going to do a free bell start for Red Bull. Southern, no. they wanted something that was fast paced. Something which would be fun, but it, I don't think it's possible. I mean, it's no, it's not really possible. Is um, if it, it's an AV4, you have a different Empire War start depending on your serve. So, oh. like the English, they would start with the archery range a while, the French starts with the stable. I, I don't think it's possible in AV2. Um, uh, I think it kind of decreases the, the the strategy of it because, like, let's say you want to play Franks, but then you want to play archers just to for the surprise element. Yeah, but I think it allow a ton. Like, if that was a bit more, you'd require hidden pick, no repeat kind of thing, so you don't know what your opponent drafted. Um, and mm -hmm. but I, I I think like that, as a side like that's just a side note. It'd be interesting if Empire Wars could start like that. I know T was one or two in a two v two Empire Wars tournament. He was he was playing around with the idea to have a people start with a one guy with an archery range and one guy with a barracks, which is you can do that in team games, but in because you can kind of like assign some things yeah. to certain things and colors, mm -hmm. so you can do that. But in one v one, it's not possible because you have to. Uh, you need to know what the player wants there. Where in a two v two, this kind of a established meta, so to say, right? Um, it's, but that would be interesting uh, to get quickly back to the original question. I think not even a fifty thousand dollar deathmatch tournament. Is gonna stop Hera. Oof, that's a that's dominance. Man, that's it, that's it, a call. That's a big with, call. Like if it, if the prize pool is big enough, and it's if he is not, it's not in his like say comfort zone. I think he would put in the most hours. Um, like every other tournament. To, <laughs> yeah, and also as Nelly has said this multiple times over the years since. Like 2019, he says if he coaches Hera for a week in deathmatch, Hera would be the best player in the world in deathmatch. So, I, I mean, he has all the skill, he has the skill set for it. Um, oh, for sure. Yeah, and all the like, the like he has experience in mental game. Like, whenever a conversation mm -hmm. about Hera comes up about other, like, it's always like the same comment always as he. He pretty much trains more and better than anybody else, and that's a big reason why he is the top player. Yeah, and it's like very deservedly so. Yeah, and yeah, I don't, I don't think we're gonna break his dominance for a while. Maybe he has a bad run for whatever reason. Um, it but it could just be that, like it's not, like the other guys are still super strong, like uh, Viper, Tato, Leary, Yo. At least these four, but I think so. Uh, freaking Andy is the the all, only other guy who's uh, taken a win against Hera in this uh, run of twelve months. Uh, the other two were Viper and you. Uh, so like, yeah, it's not like he 
cannot lose sometimes he 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 can lose so like if it happens in like a uh, a direct elimination game. match then yeah he's he's out so we'll we'll see how it goes i feel like the 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 format of the events uh is helping him as well cuz the the direct elimination games end up being later in the event and so there will be longer formats and obviously it's easier to beat the favorite in the best of three than it is in the best of seven so yeah yeah if you can catch Hera off guard earlier in the (laughs) event in like best of five then might be maybe it's your best chance of of upsetting him uh Mm. yeah i don't like i know we're thinking about format and what else and like trying to make it more difficult for him. The, the flip side of that would be everyone else just has to raise their game. Yeah. Which I'm not, you know, just from my impression, I'm not sure that everyone is doing the same kind of level that he, like, he's dedicated to the game. But there's also the other side that they all have to be like if you want to be a top level player, you're probably gonna to have to try and be like a top level streamer as well. So like Hera has like an editor, he has people taking care of certain things and all of that all of these things take time. All time that you can't do doing doing certain things. So it's such a complicated situation of like how you you manage that. It's a lot more than just being good at a game and being able to play it well. There's a whole there's a whole maturity that has to come all to that to make sure you put yourself in the best situation to to get better. A mentality, kind of, but also you need other things to go right, mm-hmm. like the ability to train a lot or you know stream a lot, yeah. or basically to play a lot. You need that's the biggest thing, and not, that's what something everyone like has. But, mm. but yeah, he's probably he's probably the like. Well, most tournaments is probably the most prepared and he's played the most hours. And I think also something that he talked like that's touching on what he's talked about after Hidden Cup is he practices a lot with people in the qualifiers, mm-hmm. right? Helping them. Like yeah. he'd be playing with Sebastian and I think Mihai. I can't remember if he's mentioned him, Mihai, but I feel like that might be. But like he's definitely Daniel. like Sebastian, Hard, like those guys, like he's practicing, he's already a step ahead of some of the players because so that's also something I don't, sometimes in tournaments that happen is the people who get directly invited they get called out a bit comp- when they match up against somebody in the that played through the qualifiers yeah and like he's a step ahead in that sense and i, I don't think anyone really if the of what I think most people would consider top eight i don't i think only he would be the one that's be that would be practicing be like in the during the qualifiers already yeah or just watching the event as well sorry i feel like i remember i I think uh i think viper said for the last of the cup he didn't watch a lot of qualifiers (laughs) (laughs) you'd think you'd maybe want to have like the intel on the players you know just to keep an eye on what's going on in like certain maps even if they were fairly standard maps i feel like you still want to kind of be you know like Checking in and things. I mean, you just mentioned about like multiple, like all, like all the different like training partners for Hera. Like getting like a wide variety of the other like training styles is great. And it seems to be that people have like maybe one or two training partners and just kind of like stick to them. So I think he, he tries a lot of new things and he's working out for him. So all credit there. Yeah. Um, should we move on? Yep. A quick little section on our tourney shout outs. There's a lot going on just outside the big ones. We've got Southern Disaster, which has been hosted by John Slow. That has been a lot of fun to watch. It's a Southern Death Tournament 1v1. I mentioned earlier off, uh, off recording that it's an absolute nightmare to watch because a lot of <laughs> players forget that all you have to do all you have to do in this game mode, guys, is just you have to kill the TC. So if you castle drop in a TC. Uh, it's probably going to down really quick. You'll see a lot of these games that ultimately result in like 
going for the most yolo castle, maybe you have like 10 vels left or something, and you won't resign because you're shooting that castle and you've got those 10 vels inside that. Uh, like, <laughs> and then you're trying to you're trying to get it you're trying to get rid of it because if you get rid of it the game's going to be over but the one that drives me mad is you're going to have trebs and there might be a castle in front of the tc it doesn't actually protect the tc because the trebs are going to outrange it and people try and kill the castle and i'm like my god this is so frustrating <laughs> there there was no qualifiers in sudden disaster i imagine i i would go out on a limb and i would say that some High level players would have got eliminated in the qualifiers one hundred percent. Is that? Yes. I, I just like it's, it's just misplayed it's far too much. So maybe that could have been something that they'll take forward in previous ones, uh, for future ones, should I say? But it's been casted a lot on Daniela's Dave's. I think about a bit in T nineties now, so definitely a good one That's to go cool. check out. And John Saws, of course, I mentioned them already. Um, I think they're in round to sixteen or going into quarterfinals now. Yeah, some of the some of the guys are already in quarterfinals, and the other uh, round of sixteen are finishing. I think. Okay, nice. So the last few of that, uh, Meagle Wars is finished up. Um, won by Team Andy versus uh, Team Ganji. The finals still very good games and actually worthwhile going to watch. The question mark now is when is Rage Forest going to be? And from my Discord sleuthing going around, it looks like it's going to be coming soon. So that should be something to look forward to in terms of like team game tournaments. And I think the big question is what kind of team game tournaments are going to be successful these days? I think a draft tournament is certainly one that's going to be a little bit more entertaining with teams getting drafted on. So something to look forward to there. There's also another fun little tournament from Fajita. It's a Rage Forest regular, or ex regular, should I say, but also kind of an ex pro in RF. It's all Visible Cup. So we've had Visible Cup, or we should have Visible Cup coming, which is kind of like the Hidden Cup for non Hidden Cup players. Uh, we've also had Hidden Cup, of course, but now we have All Visible Cup, where every map is played in All Visible. Um. I really don't know what to expect from this one, guys, but I'm actually quite looking forward to the mind games involved. Because you can put up a barracks up, and you can just garrison. Or you can put a range up, and you can just garrison <laughs> like one archer <laughs> or one skirm in there, and still have like, you could have like eight on gold or something. And I think it, I think it'll be a weird one. It's like £500 uh, prize pool. It's actually pretty decent players signed up but it's actually restricted as well so the top players can get there there's a lot of these tier 2 tier 3 players but I'm really interested to see how games develop even Fangi is like I don't think the games are going to be very good and they're going to be a boom fest but it's like <laughs> there's only one way to find out this is yeah. about... it, it used to be a setting um, that was played um, it was played it was on arena maps funny enough um they would play on all visible. I think it was the tournament was like BCC three or something like in that. Mm. Um, uh, but I've I've tried to find some stuff on that, but I couldn't find it because I also remember there was um, it's on either Resonance twenty two or Zero Empire's channel. They casted Doubt and KCAB playing an all visible arena game against each other. Okay, that and sounds old. Re- yes, it. It was a good. I remember it was a good game. It was a very big, like on the mind games. But I can't. I can't remember which channel it was, and I can't find the game. But I do know I watched it and was like, um, yeah, it was. It was interesting. I signed up for this. I actually didn't think. I, I thought I might, you know, not make it to that. But it looks like I. It, I will. People sign up. Sign up. <laughs> Maybe me and you are gonna get some good opponents. Yes. So, uh, we'll see. Um, I'm also signed up for this last one here. It's Phallusocracy Cup. The full water-based tournament, I think it's hosted by... Uh, I think it's actually a few of them that are involved in it. It's basically the kind of like Thai- Taiwanese group. Like, Haley Swall or Swall. It's one of these ones, but uh, I-, I can't... I'm not quite sure what his name is, but it's a few thousand dollars I think on it. And pretty much all the top players are signed up. So I'll be interested to see how that one goes. Uh, I'm signed up as well, so I'm hoping for a big dog in the first round. I think I'll 
probably sneak in. It's going to be 128 players, so it's a it's a big bracket, and there should be a show match going on. Well, I guess when this is out, it'll be going on today, which would be Saturday the 30th between Hera and ACCM. And then I guess if we don't see it live, uh, I'm sure there'll be GMT. yeah, 15 uh, GM. So there'll be a lot of there'll be vods or stuff for people to catch up on as well. Might be a worth while look. If you don't like water, you, you never know. Just just try. You might actually enjoy wa watching a full tournament based on water maps because it's water maps are a bit polarizing. Guys, are not. I feel like you either love them or you hate them. There's not a lot of in between. <laughs> I like I like early game water. Late game water, me at least. Yeah, that's late game water feels like what a lot of people just hate, to be honest. Okay, let's get going on to our next little topic. It's gonna be a return of the quiz. And we're gonna have three questions, guys. I want us to just think about when we're given answers. So don't give them super quick, let's maybe try and think about what the answer could be and what the answer could not be. The first question is going to be, uh, it's basically going to be a dummy test. Like, both of you guys should not get this one wrong. And if we, <laughs> I, like, if we do, no pressure. You, I, I was like, should I put an easy one in? I was like, you know what? It's a good, it's a good chance to actually like try and embarrass you. You know. I was like, why, why wouldn't I? Like, too good not yes. to. Um, so let me just find my question list here. So, okay. Got a couple of things I need to move around on different tabs. So the first question. Th this is what this is literally a dummy test, but let's think it out. Okay, this is the only non-unique technology that costs stone. So yeah, I thought this one was super easy. Like, okay, I know that. Right? In terms of easiness. Let's say ten's extremely easy and one's or one's very easy and ten's extremely hard. Where would you rate this on a scale of easiness? Negative ten. <laughs> one, yeah, it's like <laughs> it, it, it's a bit of like a, a meme in T nineties uh, channel with it. Get, it always gets. It's one of the few things that gets really excited about when somebody researches it. I mean, come on, yeah. United gets excited about a lot of things. Even when you're going into the loans, you like know, Yeah, I, I don't, I don't. But yeah, it is murder holes, if if I may. And I feel like yeah. bo bonus point should be like, what are the unique technologies that do have stolen? Part of the cost. So I'm gonna get this one wrong. I can uh, only think of one. See, I can only think of one. Great, but... The the Chinese Great Wall costs stone right now, and I think artillery used to cause uh, to cost. Oh no, crenellation maybe. The crenellation uh, was the only one that really sprung to my mind when I was thinking about it earlier. Yeah. I think so. I think artillery used to cost, cost stone, but it has been changed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think crenellation still costs stone, and I think yep. Great Wall, the Chinese one, might cost stone. Yep. That is. I don't know if there's a third hiding there. I don't know. I don't. I, don't, I, don't, I, I thought about fact checking about, but you know what? I'm. I'm going to be much more happy just having an organic conversation. I don't want to like one up you guys or anything like that. I just want to have a. <laughs> A little bit of a conversation and try and work out what it is. Okay, so that was that was our easy one. So well done. Point a okay. point a piece. Um what did I have down for the next one? Now this one should be a little bit more challenging, but maybe you can tell me how easy maybe we can try and psych each other out a little bit and we can uh okay. we, we can uh we can see how easy or difficult we think this one is. This is the only civilization that misses both bracer and ring archer armor. Easy or hard? I feel like it's like a two or three out of ten. Ooh, okay. Do you agree, Panda? So slightly harder, but Mrs. Both Bracer <laughs> only civilization. Mrs. Both Bracer ring and Mrs. Both Bracer <laughs> and Ring Archer Armor. See. You know what? I was thinking of the wrong sieve. I might, um, I might be thinking of the wrong sieve as well. I feel like, <laughs> so, like I thought it was obvious, 
it, it, it is obvious. Either both, like what I, I have is like, is this sieve? And I was like, wait, no, this sieve doesn't have it. What now? What the first sieve in my mind? Uh. Yeah, are you still Tarzan? Are you still on a free? No, I'm gonna up it to like a four. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like a, it's a four. It's, a, it's a bit of a. But you can one. get, you can get like a four out of ten wrong, right? <laughs> you can't make excuses in early. <laughs> do we want to think out loud in this one? Okay. What do we okay, think? Okay, so what can what like, can it not I... be? So obviously, it has to be a sieve that doesn't. Where, uh, that doesn't shine with with archers, so eliminates a lot of them. There's maybe only one suit that has good archers and legs bracer, and that it would be uh, Malians. So like it has to be a suit that has crappy archers. So instantly, I'm thinking Franks, and I'm thinking Celts. And now it's like so those two suits miss bracer for sure. And now I'm wondering about the the ring archer armor. And and then you, the question is like, which of these two sieves has the crappiest skirms in the game? <laughs> well, I mean, maybe Burmese skirms uh, or Turk skirms. No, I, I, I'd actually favor Burmese and Turk skirms over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I think it's Franks. I think because skirms, French, French. I've played lots and lots of of Franks, especially <laughs> on Vupoli. <laughs> and I, I think Frank Skirms in late game really feel like they die easily because they're lacking the archer armor. Uh, and I think, but then again, Celts have the option to go more siege uh, than Skirms. I don't know. I do feel like it's Franks. That would be my that would be my answer. Panda, can you explain why it's Franks and not Celts, or why it's Celts and not Franks? No, I'm with, I'm with Tarsus as it's Franks. Uh, the answer, the question would have been two if it was like six months ago. Um, See now, you, now you're now you're getting what I'm hitting at. Uh, oh. Celts got given uh, that. Celts got given the last arm upgrade in a patch in the last six Did months. They? Did wow. they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, it, it was, for some reason, the knowing I, <laughs> Whoever makes Celt Skarms, man, and they gave him the last armor, like, that's gonna make a fucking difference. I, I, I think it might, was... like, a little bit. You know, like, you feel like you think about it, like, like, Franks, they have the option to go for cavalry. Obviously, they're gonna go for cavalry. I've never made Celt Skarms. Never made them. Never will. They missed the plus four defense. I, uh, I think that was I mean, Celt like... is, like, the worst civilization in the game, so. What? Bro. No. What? You think so? In 1v1? It's 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 so crap. Like it's That's the cool. hardest. What do you it's think the hardest thief to master. It's it's definitely the hardest thief to master. And even if you are a really strong Celt player, you're still gonna struggle. So I think it's it's just the crappiest thief in the game. <laughs> you can thank the devs for that. And nope. Yeah. 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 Bring back our infantry speed in Dark Age, man. Give them five percent in Dark Age. Agreed. And then 10% feudal and then 15 and then 20% in him. Like make them. I like want to see I want to see Huang do wonders with Celts. I want to see I want to see Yo come back strong with Celts. I want to see Vinchester do stuff with Celts, you know? And and it's not gonna happen because they're so bad. It's kind of a shame to see like classic subs, like AOK subs especially, kind of like fall away a bit, you know? But they yeah. should be like they should just be like such a core of the game, even like in the competitive scene as well. I mean, they're like like the the William Wallace campaign. Uh, so many people have memories of that. Uh, I think else, yeah, they have this like iconic, status. but they really struggle because they don't have anything they're really good at except. Maybe infantry, <laughs> and that's by far the yeah infantry and siege. But siege is too expensive. Uh, in one v one, like you're not gonna make siege on edgers and win. And I get yeah, Kels is like amazing in Black Forest, but Black Forest team games. But that's pretty much the only thing. They're just they're just uh they're misunderstood. Come on, they have Paladin, man. <laughs> they do have Paladin. No bloodlines, no plate barring armor paladin, but paladin nonetheless. Dude, they, do, you, do you not remember that game? 
Come on. Oh yeah, help do out in that game. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, sometimes you got to take a shot. You must have a shot you don't take, you know? Michael Scott, Wayne yeah. Gretzky. I was okay. Biz Paladin <laughs> in a team game. Yeah, Biz Paladin. Yeah, the pocket kind of was Kals. <laughs> no, but the other pocket was Kals. I was like, okay. Yeah, that was back in like, the days when you... Defense. They're okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're kind of crunch. Back... And you miss out on, <laughs> you miss out on uh, Furnace as well. So you miss out on Plus 4. Yeah, the only yeah, thing but... you need for Paladin is the defense. So you have the, the 7 Pierce armor. Nah, bro, just, like, you just attack. Four Cavaliers. Plus 2, it's <laughs> important. <laughs> Not in the green scheme of things. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, well done so far. The final one. I thought this was quite a tough question. Only the civilization could research two unique technologies in the Conquerors. I think there was only one, right? Uh, that's like that's what I of... said. Yep, only one. One yeah. out of ten. That, that's like a two <laughs> out of ten. Oh, you, think because... this is, you think this is easy? This yes. is super easy because I've been playing the game since the Conquerors. I remember when Conquerors was released. <laughs> Probably because I'm old then. <laughs> Maybe your memory is just good. Uh, my memory is pretty good, but also, yeah. Uh, I think I remember when Good on Empires added uh, new new text and everything. Okay, so talk us through this one. Only one of are two unique technologies in the Conquerors. Uh, well, it's goth. Uh, they had perfusion and archy from Conquerors. Uh, that was the. You know, I think also. I think unique technologies were added with the Conquerors, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think they were. They existed in Age of Kings. I could be wrong yeah. there, but no, I think it was sure like a Conquerors right. thing. I think they just. I think Sibs, certain Sibs only had one. No, no, no. They, back then they only uh, they only had one, but I don't think they were even a thing in Age of Kings. No, I but think I think they were. See, I think they were. Yeah. That's, that, that that is the stance that I'm taking. Could be wrong though. Mm, and I might... don't think so. But I think it's like they all got added in Conquerors and Celts and, and Goth. Sorry, got two of them. I don't know if there was any reasoning for Goth. I think maybe they wanted to have um, the Anarchy deck uh, as like a. Bonus for them to be able to produce Huskulls at uh, the barracks, which was like the unique thing they could do. And uh, and, and that's, I think the only the only other civs that had a, a unique unit they could produce outside of the castle were the ones with uh, ship unique units. But you still needed a castle to make those. So you needed a castle to make longboats. You needed a castle to make yeah, turtle ships and all that. Yeah, they were only added with conquerors. Mm, okay. Yeah. Um, but that's like that. a, a nostalgia thing. <laughs> yeah. Could you imagine Maybe some like, yeah. with no unique decks? You know what else was added with conquerors and probably should be removed from the game? Oh, oh dear. Hans? True. Oh, how? True. <laughs> you know when I first came back to the uh, like age. I had, like took took a big massive like sabbatical from the game essentially, and I came back and I was like, man, what are these fuck? What are these things so helping here? What is this? I had like no <laughs> idea. And I was like, oh, it was an upgrade to Pikeman. I was like, what? I was like, I was like starting to like gaslight myself and like, where are these things actually existed when I played or like, or yeah. not? I couldn't work it out. I had no idea. Like I swear, I didn't... I've never seen these, but have I? I was like. Turns out I hadn't. And then you always had like these. We had a lot of visual mods, but like four or five years ago, where a lot of things getting changed. And mm. you could go to like one, oh, yeah. you could go to one stream in like a halberd year, but like, completely different depending on like who you're watching. That's actually Mem something at I some thought... point had like unique architecture sets for every Civ. Oh, dude, those, yeah, uh, they're crazy. It was called independent architecture. They, yeah. they even added that like really late with HD, like after Rajas, and like the ability to individually mod the stuff, and mm -hmm. yeah. it never got added to DE as well, which is like funny that they did like they never did went that route. Um, mm. I think it's a good thing, honestly. I feel like it'd be. <sighs> I feel like it'd be. 
it's nice to have like that uniqueness, like individuality. But from like a viewer's perspective, I think it's a I think it's a little bit too confusing. Well, it's not a good thing that it's limited. Like you should have the choice, and the streamers would probably choose to keep the things like as mm. as close to the base game as possible. But yeah. like if you're just like playing on your own and you want variety, it's a shame that it's not possible. Yeah, right? yeah. Because they are in like I've seen it on Reddit, but it's mostly in the AOE Discord. Somebody who posts like he changes the graphics of units to be regional, like, and that they really they look and they look really good, and it's not jarring. Like, no offense to Mem, but his texture mods that he used back on on Woogly were a bit like it made your heart like, what's the business? Um, <laughs> yeah. looking at the architecture, like it can be done really well, I think, mm -hmm. but. It, it, it's something I was, I was actually surprised that they, I guess they removed the ability for that, or didn't carry it over for the, maybe it was time constraints or whatever, but it is possible to do, it used to be, so um, maybe it will be again in the future when they do some, maybe, we'll, we'll see. Uh, but... Yeah, it's kind of nice to have like a bit more an authentic you know experience, so to speak. I think someone's done like a skin tone one as well. For like. So that one is a bit harder. I, f I feel like, I f I feel like I've seen that on Reddit. It might have just been like somebody like thinking about it, but like it is kind of silly. You like boot a game up as Malians and everyone's white. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do get why they're not, they don't do it because you need to create like all the villagers. And all their tasks, like they need to create six, like three hundred sixty sprites for each of them. Maybe it's even more. Like, so I, I get why it's not done. And you, it's some people already complaining. Oh, the game's too big and mm. blah blah blah. But yeah, you need to create new units for that. With yeah, new sprites and all those individual frames. And not just the bells, so all the units yeah. essentially as well. Mm. But the bills is the big part. They they take up a lot because it's every individual task has its own full set Model, of yeah. how many ever individual frames that needs to be added to the game. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, if the, if it could be done like in that where it's an optional thing, I think it's it's fine. So it only um, does has some you know like it it. it only affects you if it only like affects you kind of uh, yes thing is like a mod essentially but but to be fair that's all aoe mods it's not like the game's too old to have mods that affect the opponent visually <laughs> so um maybe it's not i think aoe4 actually could in theory have mods that see the opponent sees but what whatever about that uh, but yeah i think that Maybe you could add it. I, I guess another thing is they might be scared of the loading time because, and I do not, I, at least that's how I understand it. When the game is in like the loading screen after you've, you know, like launched the lobby or mm -hmm. the count of rank, it loads all the assets that's going to be needed for that specific game. Um, Some maps so are, you have... are really bloody bad. <laughs> Got to be said. Well, no, no, more like um, for you, like you have Hindustanis and I have, say, Britain. So it loads all the sprites that um, Hindustanis needs and Britain's needs. Now, if you play a 4v4 game and you have eight different things, it needs to load all those things for all the players and that slows down the loading time. I, at least that's how my understanding is what's happening i mean i may be wrong but i think so that could also be a reason they I, don't do it yeah i feel like that does make sense but like some like what i would just get like some of the maps when you try and load in with like the size like the size of the script to matters does it not so like depending yeah, on like how like big it is some maps take a really long time to like load in yes that is i also that's having to go read through all those um like lines and stuff. 
So yeah, you you also don't you don't want something that's affecting performance. Like I don't want to sit ten minutes after I've launched the game before actually yeah. building my first house. It's uh, annoying. Yeah, and I mean, difficult enough having to put two games playing at the one time, right, to make a game functional. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess well done, gents. The last time we done I didn't quote the questions, like they were too difficult for you, so I need to like find a mid-ground now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Next time you're gonna get challenged and you're gonna get none of them right. I'm gonna make them very difficult. <laughs> you better get started. Next time you're gonna ask how many lines of script does Arabia have? Oh god. I think the last time I remember asking it was uh, who misses out in both the Castle Age mining decks? And you guys are both dumbfounded. Yeah, I he probably don't forgot. Know. Exactly, he's probably still yes. don't know. <laughs> he's still... <laughs> yeah, no idea. Still don't know. <laughs> oh god, it's Piper's favorite. Aoe Tech Three Dot Mid. Hey. To be honest, I actually seen his Viper's favorite Civ these days could probably lead to the DMs. I mean, it's kind of controversial <laughs> saying that because it feels like he's had a lot of favorite Civs in the last number of years. <laughs> it's been Borghese for a while, and now it feels like Kamara was there as well, though, you know. But only Kamar when they were sucky, his... you know. Uh, Kamara was it the... like World of Kingdoms? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah since um... they have the this performance, they've yeah. been too easy, so. He liked Kimar before they were cool, but I feel like Kimar Portuguese are definitely in that conversation of being like favorites of, but Chibidians have definitely taken over. Yeah. He basically just likes Civs that are very uncool at that time, which Chibidians are, I would say they're probably pretty uncool at this moment. They're going to be OP yeah. soon enough and everybody will love them, and then Viper will be on to new Civ. It'll probably be Armenians. <laughs> No, no, no. Listen here. Armenians are great, Siv. Bro, Armenians are, why. Armenians are absolutely <laughs> dog shit. I don't know. I don't... Armenians oh are one of the best Sivs in the world at the moment. I feel like... Best in the game. Oh, on water, on water they're really yeah. good, but the lands... God. I don't know. I, I've had fun playing with them on land. 100 HP champions and bomber towers? Like, come at me, bro. They're, Especially they're, in a team game. They need, they need the Javadin's treatment. And it's like, if you just give them BBC... It'd be like a much more playable Civ. And like Ooh. team game and 1v1. You think you have to remove something then? If you give them Bombard Cannon. Why? They're, they're, they're terrible. Uh, yeah. Don't tell me 100 HP champions are good. It is. Bro. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I just know I've played with them and it's fun. And I've had, I've played with some other friends who also got. The, I'm not like, gonna say. No, I'm not gonna say they're not fun. Like, the, the argument is if they're good or not. Uh, it's, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> they still. I don't. At least I find them fun, really fun to play with. Um, the, on, the only thing I really hate about Jordans and Armenians is this uh, fucking on your bells and then. Accidentally clicking on the bloody mule cart at the same time, and you like try to move villagers in the way, like, oh, sake, why is the mule cart going all the way over there? I mean, for that to happen, yeah, there's mod, there's a mod, there's a like the the trade donkey. I, I use that as a mod so that I it gets rid of the I cart, not... right? Yeah, basically, it makes it the one tile that is big because the graphic is bigger than the actual mm. size of the. Of the car, like of the objects, to speak in technical terms. So, like it only it drops off on the donkey, up. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, it's the same with Ratha, it's kind of like the, the, like the graphic is bigger than the object itself. Oh, okay. So, they always it looks weird when they are fighting. So, yeah, that's that's a very useful mod. And then you'll know also because people that are that weird walling sometimes that happens with the mule cards and then the units get in. Mm. But if you see that specifically, then it helps a lot. Um, yeah. Tech tips, oh, not tech tips. Um, AWE tips with with uh, spec chat for you guys. Making uh, a mule card as part of your wall is not a good idea. Silly. Yeah, probably. Bad idea. I've seen people do it. 
<laughs> okay, let's move on. Uh, next topic is going to be the DLC discussion. Uh, Panda, you want to take us away with that? So we'll just discuss the DLC, then we can move on to the patch and uh, the hotfix after as well. But DLC first. Yeah. So on the 14th of March, they uh, released the Victors and Vanquish DLC. Um, this is uh, the first single player only focus con or oh, single player content focus dlc we've had actually for years i like saying we don't want new serves and that so i can see why they did it uh um testing the waters with it um it's a bit controversial because it's re repackaging of one of the um of a Forgotten Empire Studio developer of his mods that are available for free on the mod workshop. They still are, if you want to try them out. And, you know, <laughs> wanna, like, if you want to play, it, it, like, if you want to see, like, is this for me, the type of content? Like, do I like this? And then before going to buy them, or you can play them all. There's 14 that are, can I say, repeat? And then there are five completely new ones. Um... They're not campaigns. It's another bit of a controversial point. In the original, when they announced that they will be announcing something, they said there will be campaigns. And then it was during the actual announcement, it said it's scenarios only. And the same was on the Steam workshop. I think that way it might have been a bit of a disconnect between whoever wrote that original article, maybe, and with what was whatever, actually planned. Yeah, whatever so, comms have maybe had and then kind of. Yeah, so yeah, like I'll, I'll give them a benefit of the doubt there. I don't care about a pre announcement thing, right? You shouldn't take that, how can I say, too hard. Um, it's just telling you something is happening, <laughs> kind of. And the basically, it's gotten really bad reviews. It is currently sitting on me quickly. Check this. It's not high. It was last I checked, thirty three percent. The last I checked, it was not good. Yeah, I wasn't sure. Yeah, about it. The uh, why can't I find this? Ah, oh, it's thirty percent at the moment. Mm. Really bad reviews. Problem is, it feels like a lot of people are didn't read what they are buying, or they're just leaving a negative review because they can. Like so there are some people complaining that there are no serves. Or people still complaining that it is scenarios and not campaigns, even though kind of like when it was officially and like revealed what it is, nowhere did it say that is, you know, campaigns. Um, the price is a bit high, maybe. Like, I think it's it was $13 before the release, but it's $15 now. So that makes it hard to justify for some people on single player content. Kind of, oh, that is kind of a lot, compa like in comparison to our DLCs. Yes. Like, there are DLCs have not been that expensive. Yeah, and I know, like, you have the people that have to create the graphics, you know, like the slides for it. You have the people doing the voiceovers. I have not played them myself, so I don't know how many people were involved in that sense with it. But for something that's technically been repackaged is quite a lot you could uh, i know pe this is slightly also on the dlc like people are complaining that the uh, mountain rails dlc was also 15 dollars. but i'm like you can't i i get 15 dollars is a, is a big increase from the previous 10 but also like you kind of have to pay the people that are working for you and you can't kind of justify paying them the same salary all the years right so mm. you think uh, like you kind of need to get mo more money in some way to also cover their costs because if my employer is not giving me an increase or a very low increase i'm gonna i'm gonna go somewhere else right um so that i do not know if there are many bugs this probably yeah. there's there was bugs on it right um I've seen some complaints. I feel like but... I feel like that patch specifically, the Victors and Vanquished one, 
What was the what was the major issue? Like this is the thing when we have patches so quickly, it's, it's very easy it, to it forget the previous issues because you're always moving on to the next ones. They they added two new features: this the seek thing, and actually three. Like if you click units to garrison, then they will all like kind of spread out to wherever they want need to garrison, in something similar. So like if you have six rams and you have thirty units and they'll then you you click only on one ram and you units go into that. That's something. Mm -hmm. Then there was the um seek shelter, which does the same thing, but you know, like for villagers to go hide. I still don't use the hotkey. I don't know. <laughs> I just keep forgetting. I, yeah. I'm just so in, ingrained to click garrison already. Um but I've not used then that there's one the once. four the drop of resources hotkey. Wait, wait, which had some bugs. Um you could drop off resources at wrong at the wrong buildings. This has since been fixed. And then there was that other bug where if you're on wood and you ask your villagers to a food source and then click the drop off hotkey, they convert that wood into food, which is actually a funny bug. A <laughs> um, yeah, game changer for a uh, forest often. Yes. Well, if you you require sub like incas or um or uh, what's the uh, good jaras, I think, to make really make use of this. Um, but other uh, those were fixed. Those are the big bugs. I I know I've seen people complain there uh, there were bugs on the in the mission stuff, and that the they there's some um, also criticism from the actual campaigns. I'll get back to the multiplayer stuff again now. Is it was it's not polished. There were no bugs, and that. But I saw a post by the creator of the um of the basically of all these scenarios. But he's deleted it since on the forums. But he said, "Oh, really? They think yes." Um, he said the QA reported and he fixed six hundred and four bugs in this in those in the scenario missions before release. Um, and there's still bugs in the thing, which like it got addressed. There was a patch this week, right? Some of them got the big ones got addressed. It was just like insane. Six hundred and four bugs. <laughs> uh, Wonder what the is... mana was involved in, as in fixing, like not just the fixing that, yeah. also the, re the reporting of those said bugs as well. Wonder how like how many mana errors have been sunk into that. Maybe that exactly. Maybe you start to realize why the price point is fifteen dollars. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and also like these scenarios are long, right? <laughs> That's uh, so it might not be for everyone. I, I Viper played like for three hours in game. I think on the one that he has played on stream so far. Maybe it was longer even. I think it was like I've three seen some half. people three three real life hours. No. Oh my god! It was. It was long. I th even to break very between. Long. <laughs> he did um, say it was one of the best scenarios he'd ever played, though. This is, okay, so this yeah. is this is Viper, arguably the goat, one of the best players in the world. It's taken him um, how many hours? Oh, okay, three hours. The YouTube video. The how YouTube video is three hours twenty minutes. Oh for God's sake! How long, long is this going to take a regular person to do? I think it's going <laughs> to seen... take like let's say. EU Paradox, a 1700 player. It's going to take you the same amount of time or even like a little bit less because it's not really something that's really tied to your... Uh, like I think that the gameplay in this scenario is very unique. So you don't have to be Viper level of like micro macro to, to win this. It's like lots of special mechanics and everything. And I think um, there's like a lot of like... Uh, you, you can play this one like very different, like in many different ways. Uh, essentially, you have a list of objectives to complete, and you need to complete maybe like I don't know seventy percent of them. And Viper wanted to make sure that he did every single thing, so he he did extra extra time on that. Oh, he's he, gone, he he's probably could have finished in like two and a half hours, you know. Uh, but he wanted to fin to completely clear the map and everything. So if you want to just like uh, finish the mission quickly, it's probably at least like two hours, but it's, it's shorter than what Viper did, and it doesn't need to be like Viper level. Mm -hmm. So I, I've seen somebody say they they played nine hours on a certain scenario, which oh <laughs> is like, I I can't even say that's crazy because back when I was like only playing 
scenario stuff, I would easily crack 20 hours on a mission playing my single player style, you know, like I'd kill a yeah. town and then I would rebuild it, like, uh, you know, like make a pretty town and stuff like that. So I can, I can see people, like, if you enjoy that type, like if you enjoy that type of content, it, it it's really enjoyable. I think me 10 years ago, 15 years ago, would have loved this. I'm a bit more competitive like now. 20 years so ago I, for me. Yeah. I feel like if I was 10 years old, I would have loved this. When I had no one else to yeah. play with for this game. And I was just like, hmm, this is a great game. I bet there's like no other people that actually play it. Yeah. And sometimes you set yourself a challenge like, I'm going to win this mission without losing a single unit, right? So it's a, <laughs> um, like those type of thing. Like, at least, like, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm rambling. <laughs> um, it, so, like, there's a lot of different ways to play it. There's also like a, you can extend this stuff or, or the, yeah. after yeah. i think a lot of them they have a free play option where once you've complete all the base objectives and you can go and then research a technology to win it or you can continue to go uh, to play and do all the other stuff explore huh. the maps see what's going on which is i like that um and having the option for that it, that's nice and maybe the the og stuff or the previous stuff doesn't necessarily i think would fit those but i think in the specific things it's 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 good um mm. what else is there about this there was a i'm not gonna say it, it's not really a hot fix because they, they didn't call it a hot fix they called it a small update so bro I, come I, on I that's, got, it's, it's let's, update, let's call a spade a spade that's a hot fix it has to be a hot fix yeah, where well, they fix some of those bugs, uh, and then they somehow messed up. Where if you have your hunters, if you right click to force drop off that food, they will, will turn into lumberjacks after dropping off the food. Yes, which that, is really annoying. I that's, that's, <laughs> that is quite annoying. And I find it might but, be quite bad for like lower level players as well who like. I feel like whenever I'm like at the start of a game, I'm always like looking at the top of my like I'm always looking at my resources and how many like villagers are on each thing, just to make sure that everything's balanced. Like I'll usually yeah. pick up pretty quickly in a few seconds if something's off. I'm like, hang on, why have I got seven villagers on wood that meant it free? <laughs> yeah, it it's caught me a couple of times with the uh, um when I'm have bore under the TC um but like I. I I'm like quickly, oh no, 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 I should like let's fix this quickly. So like I, I can notice that. So I can I, I do agree it's a bit hard for low might be hard for low rated players. The most amusing thing about this bug is this bug does not apply for Ibex in any form. So that's so, so which weird. is like I can say I have a theory why I have no idea how to explain it. There's another bug similar to this. If you use the force drop of hotkey on the the pushable hunt, basically, mm. they also turn into lumberjacks. I do think they also turn into lumberjacks. Of, no, no, they turn into lumberjacks if you use the force drop off and the th carcass runs out, which is like, bro, why? <laughs> but and again, the, it doesn't count to the ibex. Um, <laughs> it's it's so weird. Despite um, them, like, you would think that we're just like, it was just a sprite as well. Like, everything would pretty much be the exact same. Yeah. I actually, I played around in the Genie Editor and I was able to fix the the one on the, like, with the deer zebra ostrich where you force drop off and then they finish the carcass. I, mm -hmm. I, I kind of fixed that playing around in the Genie Editor, but I could not, trying the same thing, it didn't fix it for the rhinos. Ah. And, it also basically like the like the big the big I'll just call it big hunt and it also didn't fix if you do the just right click force drop off with deer it also like your will go to lumberjacks it also didn't want to fix that so it's like I have no idea what's going on <laughs> anyway. yeah there's the uh, there's this other one when you get like so when you garrison your villagers in the TC like the ungarrison button doesn't always come up and they like, go back to work. So if you're ever doing a boar layer and like those buttons don't come up, it's a very nervous half a second or however long it's going to be because you're like, oh fucking crap. 
<laughs> I've not had that one yet. It's uh, I I don't I don't. The thing is, I don't know what causes it either. So it's a very strange one, but it does happen. T West put a video of it on his Twitter, but it's happened. It's happened to what to me? The, but only once. Last, only uh, once when I've been learning a bore, and I always do the TC trick. The one that annoyed me a lot was um, that got fixed now in the news patch is where if you have, if you like shift Q something and then you have, want your last task to be a garrison, it ignores all those previous like Q, like shift stuff you shift queued. And I, I, I was playing a tournament on Adriatic Islands and there's like neutral islands in the corner where there are like relics. And I'm trying to get my monk. Pick up the relic, drop it off in the monastery, and go to the transport ship. And I'm monk just kept on going to the transport ship. And but like I need to f be focusing on my military at the front. I don't have time to waste on this monk. And I'm fighting for three minutes with this monk just to get grab the relic and drop it off in my monastery. And then I realized, oh wait, this is a bug. I remember people were talking about this. I've been wasting, you know, like three minutes of my time just shift clicking a monk constantly into a transport ship because it didn't work yeah which... i think transport behavior is still very very odd they're very frustrating unit to deal with yeah for sure uh, it was it was great okay but, let's yeah. let's move it on shall we get into our our final few news pieces i guess one kind of major one and three kind of more minor stories uh tarzis you want to talk about our kind of last Big major news. Yeah, sounds good. So, last major new uh, aftermath disbands. So, after I think uh, five or six years, maybe a little bit more, uh, the legendary. I mean, on and off as well, right? It's kind of like aftermath disbands. So, yeah, like uh, I guess the writing was on the wall for that. So, like, um, Aftermath was formed back in the day. It was uh, Hart, Leary, MBL initially. And Nikov joined uh, very shortly after he had been playing team games with Hart because both of them were uh, on the same time zone, South America, also playing, uh, speaking Spanish. And then Hera joined uh, at the end of ECL. Hera since became the best player uh, in AM. And then uh, he does in January with uh, the bombshell that he was leaving AM and and joining Gamer Legion. So since then, like we were not really sure what was going to happen with with aftermath. A lot of the players had been kind of on and off, as you said. I think Hart took a couple of years uh, of break. Uh, Nikov had a time where he left and joined back. Uh, Leary had the hiatus where he was. Uh, playing for Tempo Storm. Uh, yeah, so like lots of on and off. Uh, but essentially, they confirmed that they, they have disbanded the team and they're not, no longer uh, playing together as like as a group. They had been... The reason, the, the main reason uh, cited for that was that they had been trying to uh, reach out to professional organizations uh, since basically the inception of AM a couple of years ago. And nothing has panned out uh, since then. So, like, that kind of asks the question, what is next? Uh, every player in AM is, like, a fantastic player. Uh, Leary, arguably, still a top four player in the world. Hart, probably top 15, top 10, NBL, same ballpark. And then Nikov, just, like, maybe slightly further down maybe top 20 top 15 at the moment so yeah like obviously all of them are extremely strong players uh so would they play together again if they were a team game event uh they it's it's unclear so yeah uh, i think it's what is for sure is like it's uh it's uh, they have been like a a big part of the competitive history of the game like even last year uh in they, they, they reached uh, the finals of two team games tournaments, uh, EWC and Cartographers. Uh, so yeah, they have been like a very strong. They have been a staple of the the competitive scene uh, for for years, and yeah, we'll see what 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 happens next. Any theories? 
I, I think I'm not too sure. See one, see one comment on uh, AM reaching out to orcs. Well, my understanding is that some orcs also reached out to them, but the emails were not checked. Have you guys heard this story about the GL reached yes. out to AM first, and they reached out to oh. MBL, and he didn't check his email essentially, and never never got back. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Ooh. imagine having that opportunity <laughs> passed up. Or imagine, imagine just having Gamer Legion as that Agile AM team. Yep, <laughs> that's great. Like that's that's crazy to think about. Yeah, and something so so trivial as well, like not checking your emails. <laughs> like everyone does that, <laughs> you know. Uh. So easy yeah, to yeah. mess something. You think they uh, something uh, could have done maybe back then was like searching is to create a singular email and you know like aftermath email and then they all have access to it yeah, to yeah. see. Um, that could also yeah. be something they could have done and they're not reliant on you know MBL reading his emails or someone else because yeah. I mean, but I think I. I, I I think if we were to let's say member analysis boa on Sunday, which I doubt it, I think we're very likely to see Hart, Leary, and MBL play together. Um, not so sure about Nikov. I think he might yeah. play yeah. with a uh, South American team. I can see him playing with the RGs more likely and just like play with FedEx. But no, always. Then again. He's a competitive guy. He knows that there's like literally no chance for him to go very far with an RG team. Yeah, yeah, there um, is that as well. Maybe and I think he's been playing with like MBL more often than not. Like in two v two events, it's usually MBL and Nikov, the the staple team. Yeah, so I don't know. And I, I think like they can still sign up all four of them, and they would still yeah. be probably probably top two. They'll go. I mean. So I don't know top two, but they'll go far. Yeah. I mean, the first AM team didn't have Hera in it, right? It was literally MBL, Leary, and Hart dominating everyone. Yeah. Uh, they were not dominating everyone. Well, at the first BOA, they were dominating the everyone. The first BOA. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's true. That's I when think they Nikov were kind was of already like... on the team back then, but he couldn't he, play. He, he of stole proxy. the game. He had pro. No, yeah. He had... yeah. He had problems with something, and then he just like uninstalled the game. Yeah, he rage quits. <laughs> oh jeez. Uh, yeah. yeah, I I do understand the frustration. It's if if it's not working, you just lose all motivation. Um, but yeah. Then the question something... is also: Are all the teams going to reach out to some of these players, which could like end up like okay, let's say your bullet, uh, you just acquired ACCM. You know, thinking, okay, like who can I add to this team? Uh, ACCM Cito, maybe you add Heart to that. You say, hey, Heart, do you want to join my insanity? Or then maybe Fox, like they say, okay, like Nikov, you played with Sebastian and Morgog was captured your relic. Do you want to play with Sebastian again in like other formats? What about Fox.Nikov? You know, it's like, I don't know if this will happen, if there will be contacts or attempts made. Would they be even interested in like in joining Fox or M M Y I? I don't know. It does. It does open up a question, though, doesn't it? If that's yeah, like it may, like a, a something. Have, have they like con like they contact them, and maybe that's part of the reason why they've disbanded. You know, like there's 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 a lot of factors at play, and then it might just be something as simple as. Like Kara was one of the more he was like a major driving force behind like the full team as well. So like without them, it's kind of like there's probably not that kind of like same catalyst to say like they had before as well, you know? So there could be there could be a lot yeah. of things that play in this one. For sure. I'd like I'd like to see Nikov team up with Dogal and Miguel. Making do like create recreate Nervo. Was kind of like the wow, this team's gonna challenge challenge the tyrant guys. I um, and, and then Tato I, left them for tyrant. Yeah, 
I mean, uh, I, I think this, this, this. I want, I want this rumor to be disproved, because it's so nonsensical. So like, there was this Nervo uh, show match team that was Nikov, Mikael, Tokao, and Taro, and they won. They won like a, a Wolo Kingdom show match, I think. It was the first Wolo Kingdoms tournament. Yeah, it was like the only the first Wolo Kingdom tournaments, and, and then and then Boa was announced like shortly after, and Taro joined Tyrant, uh, and so. In the end, it's like Nervo, Nervo team didn't happen. Nikov joined Aftermath. Like people were saying, oh yeah, it's such a shame that like Tyrant is like poaching Taro from this team. And like all the guys <laughs> were saying, oh yeah, like this team is going to challenge like Tyrant and everything. And I want to be very clear that this, even though like I think Togao and Miguel, like fantastic team game players, especially, especially Togao probably has been at the top of team games for a long time. This team would never have been that challenging for for tyrants i i don't think sure? they would i think people are looking at it with roast into glasses they played one show match together um nikov and, and miguel had played previously they had been in final of um uh, masters of arabia 2 lost against mbl and, and viper and obviously Ugo and, and miguel had also a lot of history of playing together he played uh nation's cup 2017 won that but like yeah, like I don't Tato hadn't really played I think Tato had played with Nika a little bit, uh Return of the Kings 2e2 and uh, Escape 2e2 event on HD. But yeah. I think I think a big thing that led to this hype for them. They pl- they played against a team that was considered consisted of Doubt, Jordan, Viper, Leary and MBL. They smashed them five two in that tournament. And that, that's, in the final. That's, that's a good result. It sounds like a good result, especially how good Jordan was back at that time. Well, I know. No, that Jordan was, was. That was when Jordan good. missed the came yeah, back, yeah. basically. It was his yeah. first comeback, and oh, he was okay. not good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But, but, he only played two games in that set. He was probably he, worse he actually won back then the than where he is now. Yeah, he actually won. He actually won the first game for them. <laughs> like, or like it was Leary, MBL, Jordan, and Doubt. They won one game, <laughs> one of the two. <laughs> And then it 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 was a one zero for the team was called Grassed Out. Then five one, and then they only got the last game back. So it was it was quite the dominant display. Um, I think it excited the uh, people just then. Um, I, I I still think yeah. it would be. I think like Dugal and Nikov and Mikhail could form a solid team. I was for a moment thinking, oh yeah, and they can add Sebastian, and then it's like, oh wait, Sebastian is playing for Fox, so that's yeah. not that's not happening. But I I think uh, like at least those three are uh, they good uh, like same time zone, good players, and they could add Slam right as well, same time ish. Oh for, god, here we go. Say, uh, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> Los, wait, what was the team again? Los Machos. Was it Los Machos? That was they... impressive. Los Machos was T90's team. Or, or maybe not. No, no, right. Maybe it was like Miguel Dugal and Slam. Yeah. I think they used the same name across it, did they not? Yeah, yeah. It was... First, there was Lan was there, and then T90 came in, and then Slam came in like four different tourneys. Yeah, it's kind of weird that T90 was on that team, huh? Yeah, that was for the Return of the Clans tournament. Was it, was it ROTC um, or was it? Terra Nova. I think it was. Uh, I think it was R. I think it was Return of the Clans. I think it was R O T C. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think Terra Nova the... is like two v two, so it was probably yeah. It was oh no, it was not Slam. Los Metros was Miguel Dugao, Lan, and T ninety. Slam was that was for the them, TV... for Boa. It was for Los Metros oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. for yeah for Boa. Uh, for Terra Nova, T ninety mm. was with NBL, Remember. Oh really? Yes. Wow. Yeah. I think they had. Did they not <laughs> admin loss out of it? Not impossible. I, I, I could just be like making it up, but I'm pretty sure they had like some sort of like <laughs> schedule. And I, I'm like, oh, wow, big surprise. They had some sort of like schedule issues, if I remember right. I need to look up very quickly on the Wikipedia, but mm-hmm. now, up to imp was the team called. Yes, I mean, I think mm-hmm. this one, this tournament on for a while, and this... Yes. It was second division, was wasn't it? Because I think I remember Stake and... 
Whoever Steak was playing with, it might have been Boo. I'm not entirely sure. Ended up playing them with their them, boy. I think. Yeah, they no, play, it, was, they play... it was called Dervoy's Carrot, but Dervoy was playing Age Vampires 4 at this time. Oh. <laughs> I know, right? Like, this is unbelievable. It's probably Steak, Boo, and Cappy, I think. Yeah. I'm not seeing Cappy games. Decent, like, decent players in the Silver League, actually. And the uh, and Chaos and won stick. the final. Oh, well, he's, the worst character is King Boo and Stack. Yeah. Andy and Chaos won in the Silver League final versus Cecil and Uzi Kotti. Yeah. Box Beta. Interesting. Yeah, they had the uh, Fox Alpha in like the first. Mm. First division, I think. No, this is the fit. Oh, yeah. Uh, anyway, I went too far. I oh, made, didn't, it was... I made the logo for their voice carrot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, whatever. I've, I've got to yeah. say, I feel like it's one of the best ones in there. Yeah. Some interesting. So. Especially how the little carrot emoji replaces an eye. I think I feel like that's a really that's a that's a neat spot. And man, the map pill in this one's one. huge. Yes, it reminds me almost of my first tournament I hosted. It's seven maps each week. It's a hui hui event. It has to be at least twenty five. No, it wasn't. It's an it's I mean, Nova's this one. event. This one. Oh, it was it was hui hui. It's in the name. Nova. Yeah, but yeah. I was like, I was actually. So, mad. Yeah, Admin when you when you have three, three, you know it's gonna be a lot of maps. All right, he, he he's gonna <laughs> want at least a lot of maps. Yeah, yeah, that is how it goes. Anyway, anything else? Anything else to add? To you? On AM, I don't think so. And yeah, up to um, did yeah. uh, end up getting DQ'd. I've just seen it there. <laughs> Slight negative, maybe it is be could also be because they know there's not gonna be a big team game tournament in the near future. Yeah, I mean, I think that does make sense as well. If they can just so, focus on their 1v1 play, which I feel like Art, Leary yeah. are more likely going to want to do anyway. Yeah. yeah. And even from like, I feel like GL, the other orgs, they all care about 1v1 way more, because that's just how the, the scene centered around you know so it make it makes sense for if if that's how the arcs are going to behave it makes sense for the players to have that focus way more than anything else as well yeah agreed all right let's get on to our kind of last few minor kind of topics just worth highlighting here um ms rewards lobbies are gone i don't you may not even be aware of this problem tarsus but the lack of you actually play but there was some sort of like lobby system where people were sitting in them and accruing like Xbox reward points. And I don't know if either of you even know, but these reward points get exchanged into. But essentially, people were opening lobbies and sitting idle for hours upon end. I see they've got like a whole subreddit dedicated towards it, and, like what games are doing and what they're going to be doing us. And there was like a whole mega thread of like people going into meltdown about these lobbies getting taken away because they get, there was generally people complaining that were they were going on their laptop but they couldn't play the game but they had the game open and they were having it open for like 8 hours and just sitting idle and accruing these points really quite strange stuff uh, but Your Life, I think I'm saying that right uh, it was he, he's done an amazing job of like, he's been tracking how many lobbies there's been every day and he's been like Sending reports and uh, off to the MS team multiple times whenever you've seen one, and there seems to be some sort of action in it in the last week. Yeah, I guess week, week and a half, something like that. And Since they're all, the previous patch. Yeah, and they're all gone. They're, they're they're literally all gone. And I it, actually got like one or two we caught yesterday, um, but it's not it's not flooding all the lobbies anymore. Yeah, so like, I think, I can't remember the exact numbers, but the amount he was like seeing when he was going on 
it was like a massive decrease and it was very annoying because it does take up a lot of space when you're going through the lobby browser and kind of difficult to find maps the lobby browser. yeah and the lobby browser <laughs> isn't exactly 100 percent efficient in terms of like what ma like the lobbies it should be showing and whatnot is not exactly a great great part of the game so i think definitely worth highlighting and great job by him it just took it's kind of sad the amount of like perseverance it took for any kind of like action to come into place you know that's a lot of you think it was not necessarily like on the age of empires team's part to fix it i don't i, I think because it, i think it the, rolled back it, by like xbox or whatever it was so it might just be like a yeah it needs to be on like on the xbox side of things so like you know the people above world's edge mm -hmm. um that needs to that fix it and i assume it silently got fixed because there's nothing in patch notes about it but there's always stuff in the patch notes that we don't like they don't always put everything in that yeah. they fix right so, for example there was a bug bug i don't even know how to call it a bug but basically if you select a like a resource usually so like your gold and you click the hotkey for to unbind control groups, it would crash the game. Um, oh, for God's sakes. Which, it's not in the patch notes. Um, I, it was reported, and they fixed it. So, like, they don't always put things about, you know, like, in the patch notes, which they yeah. are fixing. Yeah. And this one goes, a couple, like, a couple of years back, when Lord of the West DLC was released, there was a desync, where if you place the building foundation under meet a unit that your opponent has selected, it would result in an out of sync for the game. Um, Jesus Christ. They, fi they fixed it within like a day, but never po posted it in the patch notes about it. Mm. And it was very like, it, it was quite like everyone, like people are like desyncing, like what's happening. And they nobody like didn't track it down. And is <laughs> we uh, like we spent me and a friend and then Robo who we, who was working for them at the time like we spent three hours testing trying to figure out what's causing this desync and reporting it back to them um back then it yeah was... and I think I'd heard of that one that sounds rather wild yeah uh, it's it's so wild like you could oh my opponent's laming me drop a palisade <laughs> and then you desync the game. <laughs> If you, I, I, did, I did that in in lobby in lobbies, but yeah. Um, so yeah, like sometimes they fix things you don't know about it, and it's good that they, you know, got rid of these and as, these reward lobbies at least. It's uh, it's annoying. They they Xbox wants you to play to be playing a game, and then you can kind of get rewarded for playing it. Not sitting um, idle in a lobby for hours upon end. It kind of defeats the purpose yeah. of a game and makes the experience much worse for others while you're doing it. Yep. It's not Indeed. great. I did go onto the lobby browser today and every single lobby that loaded in my end was custom scenario. Which I've never seen before. I was also kind of bamboozled. <laughs> I understand it was Oh, I on. saw that today. You, did, you didn't click sort by... I, 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 clicked, I clicked load more results. And it was it was only custom scenario. Really, I I never yeah. saw it. I was like, "What the hell is going on?" I was like, "Is this like the knock on effect of like the rewards <laughs> lobbies? Maybe they broke something else. Like the reward lobbies are gone, and yeah. something else could broke." Anyway, I would say I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise at all. I digress. Uh, the last couple of bits of news, very quickly. Uh, we had some sort of like politicking going on in Argentina with Manuel Adorni. I think it's like a left versus right situation, but this guy, uh, I think he's on, I could be wrong in this, but I think he's more right leaning. I challenged some other Argentinian politician, this, this female, uh, I challenged her to a game of Edge of Empires. He's got 634,000 followers. So it was quite a lot of eyes actually on the game. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Nacho did reach out to him as well. And apparently they're going to have some sort of duo. I don't know if they've had their match yet. 
I think he was playing age. Yeah, I think Nacho was meant to play him. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if they've played yet, and I think he was playing age four the other night. So he's given it the big end. He's an age two player, and then before you know, he's playing age four. Unbelievable. <laughs> where's where's the uh, where's the loyalty, man? I mean, yeah. So he's like the actually he's the the spokesperson for the president. Uh, I mean, he, he's high up in government. This is the thing. Like, he is definitely a well-known person. Colin, that's like it's, that's insane. It is, it's crazy. Like, and yeah, like a lot of followers on Twitter. Like, like I said, nearly six hundred fifty thousand. It's uh, it's insane. And there's, I think there's quite a few like high-profile like Argentinians that are uh, that enjoy the game. I think. Fico after they won the World Cup with Argentina, like tweeted that he loved age two and done some other things. Yeah, as well. so like I remember reading the tweets, and so like the 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 woman that was challenged by this guy Manuel Adorni, and then like Nacho replying. So like Nacho said, yeah, like he can, he can, he want to play. And then the girl was like, uh, oh, uh, I'm not, I'm not Nikov, but I can play or stuff <laughs> like that. You know, so she clearly knew about the scene. Yeah. It's just gonna get insane in the way about this. <laughs> this. So it's kind of funny to think about if we're watching like a Hidden Cup esports broadcast. We. Yeah. The, 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 he might be watching at the same time, and it kind of makes me think of like who else is actually watching like uh, the tournament's going on at the same time. And it's. Uh, it'd probably take it by surprise. Yeah, yeah, I think as like you don't always know. I remember that was back on back in the mixer days. Shroud was playing Age of Empires two with friends. Like, oh really? I, yes, it was a it was kind of like a big deal for a day or two. They were playing, but like it's on mixer, so it's not. I it didn't really hit that like reach of oh wow, they're actually playing this. Um, he's he's got a crazy reach. So I get. Pretty much only does FPS yeah. now, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, like, sometimes you get these, like, I don't want to say variety streamers, but, like, they come in there. It, it's like, oh, this game still exists. And it actually happens quite often. Um, and, yeah, there's probably some high-profile people. I saw somebody a post on AOE Zone. Does Davy five hundred four actually play AOE two? I just saw the topic. I have no idea how it's related or anything. Um, and I, so yeah, like that's also it's kind of big, like a big name, right? On the, I don't. I think I've seen some of his videos. Context: um, Davy five one. Who who is? I I, I honestly like priority streamers. I do not. I he's not, not a streamer, him. he's a YouTuber. Oh, okay. Um, I think he does music content. Yeah, I think he, he has this catchphrase, something slaps or like that. I assume he made a AOE, a, like an AOE2 reference um, in a video or something. Now somebody's talking about it. Ah, okay. okay. Um, I'm checking, yeah. He has like 13 million YouTube subscribers, so. Okay, that's, so, that's a big platform. It's a very yeah, big platform. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is music content. I've I've watched like a couple of years ago a video here and there. Um. So yeah, I, was, <laughs> I mean a lot of. So I I would say there are high profile names out there mm -hmm. watching, maybe playing even, but they're not like playing it in a, a sense that we know about it or like engaging with the uh, online community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then, as we're kind of talking about platform, I noticed this, uh, I think it was last week, Marine Lord, Sage of Empires 4 player, played a bit of Age 2. I think his Age 2 name is just M Lord. If I'm right. Wait, what? Yeah, Left? he was, yeah, both, both nicknames. Either M Lord or just Marine Lord. Yeah, um, yeah. did leave his old team, and he's now joined Gentle Mates, which, Tarzis, you might have some more info on, but it's uh, free, like, yeah, so... major streamers in yeah, France, if I'm right. Up. Yeah, so I think so. It's like three, big, yeah, three of the main streamers. So like the guys are Gotaga, Brooks, and Squeezy. I think Squeezy is like the 
like the content creator the t90 has 17 million subscribers on youtube he's i think the biggest french streamer and then the other two also big uh, streamers slash content creators but started off as pro players uh so one of them uh, he was playing call of duty and, and stuff like that and the other guy i don't know i have no idea about mm. uh but yeah like those those three are a pretty big figure uh in 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 the french uh scene um I think at least two of them have multiple million subscribers uh, on YouTube, and yeah, so yeah, big names. Uh, they so Gentle Mates is an esports organization. I think uh, mostly for uh, Valorant, but apparently they are also expanding it to uh, Age of Empires. Uh, so like yeah, uh, other esports uh, actually like Rocket League, Fortnite, Valorant, Team Fight Tactics, League of Legends, and now Age of Empires Four. It's kind of so, wild. Yeah. Like that's that's a lot of potential eyes on H four, on four, like yeah. just H four. But like, I I wonder if they'll go any further because I feel like they're if they're willing to go into H four, why not H two? But then I guess the question would be like, who would they go after? Because Marine Lord's French, isn't he? So I can you can see the yes. connection there, and why they would go for so, something yeah, like that. So yeah, I think like the. Marine Lauren is, is French and he's probably top two, if not top one. I think like maybe Beastie is considered the, the number one in H4 at the moment. But like Marine Lord is still up there as one of the very best uh, players in the world. So it's like easing the entry into a game. If you go into like the H2 scene, it's already smaller. Uh, maybe it's like not smaller, it's probably bigger, but it's like it's an older game. So maybe there's like a added risk there. And you and like the the best french player Cito is like arguably top 10 sometime make maybe he's more, more top 16 team. you know and he's already on the team so it's like much more difficult to uh to go into that mm. It'd be yeah, an interesting one. Let, uh, got let go by his previous team um like two months or so ago as well so he is unsigned i mean i I don't like it's he hard was, to know oh, if it was, was like let go or if they amicably just said like because usually contracts something to do just come yeah, out of thin air but probably his contract right now but they got to yeah. think like this this was probably something that was in the making for a little bit of time but yeah like one of the streamers there they just streamed the game randomly and it's like seventeen thousand viewers I think I think EGC TV had their thing going on at the same time like people the viewers sub automatically you know like. It's crazy the amount of reach that, like, just go into a different team they potentially have, and like, what kind of impact? Imagine they had, like, something happen like this in H two. I guess like the closest thing we had was probably like Everon on Temple, but even then, it's kind of like it doesn't feel like it's the same kind of level. Yeah, it's secret. But yeah, yeah, I guess it was. It's slightly different. It's different, um, different, different generation, really, of time, isn't it? I think also now teams a lot of times add, um, how do you call it, streaming personalities more, and not always yeah. necessarily players. Mm -hmm. These days, you have some teams they literally just sign content creators for the team to advertise the team. And then, like these streamers would get access to the like the big events, so and then they would get access to the you know the feed, like yeah, it makes sense. The big tournaments, which are like it's way more close in big esports compared to us. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's something that could be could be a potential to explore is for teams to sign streamers for us from us, like let's say. Um, I don't know, I need to think of a team name now. Uh, Fnatic, like they signed T90 to just stream Age of Empires for them. And it's like, then they have merch stuff with them and all those type of, you know, things that go with it. Um, we see in chess quite a bit, you know, like content creators getting signed to teams and yeah. being a bit more active that way. I kind of... I guess like everyone's got the price, but I'm kind of surprised we haven't seen a bit more of it in age. Yeah. I guess we only have like a few major creators that aren't like pro, I mean, semi pro. Some people is like sub thousand viewers, so 
I mean, mm. we have we have, we have we have lots of people, but it could also be we got aim back sometimes up. somebody doesn't want to, yeah that or somebody doesn't want to like doesn't like the con the conditions of the contract or maybe the person uh, said some stuff that they don't want to be associated with mm. you know on stream like so those are all we don't know maybe there has been a something like that yeah but it's also i think it's especially with the type of like i say the type of esports that we are um a bit more content creator focused i think those type of teams would be more the type of teams that would be looking in could be looking into a we maybe in the future yeah something to something to keep an eye on in terms of that move and what could potentially come from it okay let's uh let's let's close it off for the today i think we might have nipped over the three hour mark so it might be a first time here guys but oh Woo! It, could be. <laughs> it could be i wouldn't wouldn't celebrate too soon but i'll let you know after it's edited anyway We'll see you on the next one. Charles's Panda, thanks again. Thank you. It's a pleasure as always. And we'll, we'll see you in episode six. Six? Or yeah. Happy your birthday. Yeah.